Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm great, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Have you heard about Anchor? You mean that big, heavy thing that you throw off the side of a boat? No, silly. The podcast app that helps you distribute your podcast episodes to a bunch of major websites. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Ooh, I love less work. That sounds fantastic. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Ooh, I also love to make money. Yeah, so just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? This is Precisely Podcast, a podcast about beer and video games. I'm your host, Bo, and with me, as always, we got the ratchet to my clank. Kelly, how are you? Aw, thank you. I am (laughs) great. Thank you. This is fun. (laughs) This is fun, right? I like that ratchet to my clank. That was good. Yeah, I feel like that could be on like a Valentine's Day card, you know? Yeah, from you, like you yeah. know, 2002 when that game came out. Yeah. 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 Something like that. You know, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> How about that intro song, though? Oh, my God, dude. I was just thinking the same thing. That <laughs> intro song was ripping. Right. So yes. that's from our new producer. Wah, 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 wah. We got a producer. And his we name is out. Sam. No, I'm just kidding. We did not sell no, out. No, <laughs> we didn't sell out. No, one of my friends, Sam, who was on a previous podcast, um, I forget what episode, and I didn't have the time to look it up. Uh, he had a real deep, sexy voice, though, that I've heard from other people, other listeners. Um, I get Sam that a lot, re- too. Yeah, right? Sam <laughs> reached out to me, and he was like, hey, are you guys looking for a producer? And I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, I want to edit your podcast and make them sound great. And I'm like, Cool. I would love that. I can't pay you anything. And he's like, that's fine. I just want to make your audio sound good because I believe in you guys. So that's awesome. And he also made this intro song that was great that we just listened to. Shout out to you, Sam. Yeah. So thank you, Sam. And listeners, if it sucks, it's Sam's fault. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, we have a special guest today. As always. I've been... Yes, as always. I've been looking forward to doing an episode with this gentleman since I've first heard his angelic voice. He makes up one half of one of my favorite podcasts, and he is the reason that I started precisely. Let me introduce you guys to the delectable Dank Dan from the Purple Dungeon Squid podcast. How's it going, buddy? Oh, hello, Bo and Kelly. Thank you for having me on podcast. It's been so long in making. I'm just so pleased. Yes, I love that. Angelic voice indeed. Now, normally I do the silly Canadian accent for my podcast. Would you like me to do this for this podcast, the character uh, Dank Dan? No, please go back to your uh, your Canadian self. Okay, let me get into character. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. (laughs) I am so friggin' stoked to be on this recording. Uh, This is one of my favorite podcasts. I tune in every episode, and I'm like, I'm here in the almost flesh now, which is rad. Yes. 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 The flesh that we can be right now during this pandemic. The dark dark times. The earlier comment was the vocal flesh. Yes. The vocal flesh. (laughs) And you know what's great about the pandemic, honestly, is that it made me learn how to record remotely. Mm -hmm. And with that, we're able to have guests on that I wouldn't be able to see you. Like, when would we actually be able to sit in the same room together, you being in Canada and us being in Pennsylvania? You know? Yeah, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a distance. It's not as far as you think. Like, I can be in Florida in like 14 hours from where I am right now. Isn't that wild? 
That is that is wild. Does that count the time that you have to offer up maple syrup before crossing the border? Because I know that's a big thing. Well, I, I always have my uh, syrup pouches filled to the brim <laughs> with syrup at the ready, so I can deploy <laughs> it. Kabam, kabam. Uh, a little fun Canadian thing that is just like I sent this article to all my international friends, and it's uh, when a huge tractor trailer full of maple syrup was hijacked by organized crime, like last year. What? Oh and, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, maple syrup, like actual, real, pure as the driven snow, right out of the tree maple syrup, is worth, like, the tanker was worth, like, half a million bucks. Wow. What a heist. It's- yeah, so it was a heist indeed. And I think they, they tracked these sticky bandits down. But I just had to, I had to fire that off to everyone because it's the most Canadian article you could possibly read. It gives a whole new meaning to sticky fingers. <laughs> it does indeed. <laughs> Put that on your flapjacks. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I, I need to know more about maple syrup and how expensive it is. Is it all in one tankered like a gas tankered or is it all in like separate jars i think in this situation and i'm not sure so i'm just gonna pull it right out of the yeah, sky please, i think please. it was like a tanker truck that oh you'd find like milk or gasoline in wow yeah because i i don't know if you know so how what do you do with that on the black market you you got to fill up mason jars and a then try to pancakes. sell it behind yeah like a lot of oh pancakes. yeah hey, like what's store, the end we game have- we have this maple syrup, you know, like, how can you even get rid of it? You know, like, oh, I'm selling maple syrup for $5 under price. Like, what? Like, how much does it go for? It's expensive. Like, you're, uh, if you're thinking, like, the former Aunt Jemima size uh, a yeah. bottle, that's that would be, like, 12 or $15. Jeez. Yeah. And it yeah. comes in yeah, different color grades. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's, like, light maple syrup. There's dark maple syrup. There's all kinds of things. Bo, have you ever looked at... During the farm show, there's a whole booth about maple syrup. Then they can just go over there and try maple syrups in and out. It's wonderful. No. Oh, next time. Okay. Next time they have an in-person farm show. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, thinking about maple syrup and my cabinets where I store maple syrup, uh, the one is a glass maple leaf like mm-hmm. jar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that yep. was probably, I don't know, maybe I got it for a gift, but it's small. But like it was probably 10 bucks, you know, American. So, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But, like, to, like, cut it up into small things, like, or do you sell it, like, in, like, gallon, like, buckets to your friends? And then they split it up, like, little heroin bags? Like, how do you do it? The value of (laughs) syrup probably is a little higher than the grocery value. Now, well, first things first, you got to cut it a little. I put a little 10 to 1 Aunt Jemima's in there. (laughs) Bada bing. (laughs) You got yourself a little more profit there. Forget about it. Oh, I love it. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, besides maple syrup ice and stuff, what have you guys been up to recently? Well, P- Papa D got himself a new phone, a new iPhone 11, not a sponsor. Nice. But congrats. Uh, thank you. I it should be like an anti congrats. I hate getting a new phone, Bo. I hate it. <laughs> I agree with that. I believe it. I'm really against getting new phones too. Yeah, because it's basically my old phone. I went from a 6 to 11 and mm-hmm. it is so much money. It's like Five times as much. Do you know how many PlayStation 5s I could have purchased with this? Like two. Two Mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And it's just this little Mm -hmm. thing in my phone, my pocket. It's just a web browser and a phone caller. Like, that's all it is. It's not going to launch me into space. You know what, though? When you take pictures (laughs) with it, it looks so damn good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Like, my sweet, sweet lady was, like, actively mocking my photos. Like, she's like, let's take a Mm -hmm. selfie and and put our heads together, take a selfie. She's like, oh, I forgot your phone is basically an (laughs) Etch-A-Sketch. We'll we'll take it on my fancy, my fancy new hotness. She's on the Samsung side of the house. I'm on the, I'm on the Apple side of the house. And not because I love Apple, but because they got me early. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Yep. And now yeah. I'm too scared to go away. What will I do in the brave new world without all my contacts and all my apps? Yeah. All those contacts of people that you met 12 years ago mm-hmm. that you're never going to talk to again, but you need that. You need need that. You need that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kelly, I can tell you and I cut from the same cloth on this one. Oh, yeah. 100%. I, I have so much anxiety when I get a new phone because I'm like, what happens if everything's different? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it's not going to be, but like, 
what happens if everything is wrong and everything is different? And mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, my God. And it is a ton of money. And it's just I feel like it's a big undertaking, too, because you, like, have to go out and you have to, like, physically get the phone usually and, like, <laughs> sit in the the mobile device store or whatever carrier you have. And you spend, like, an hour sitting there and, like, they're activating it or whatever. And then they're trying to sell you on all these other plans. And you're like, I don't want this. I'm already poor enough. Can't you see I'm barely scraping by with my iPhone 6 over here? <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like... They're, they're like, well, here, you can't leave without a case. And you're like, you're damn straight. I can't leave yeah. without a case because the old one doesn't fit the new one. And uh, it's a whole thing. And it's just so stressful. For a second there, Kelly, I thought you said they you can't leave without a kiss. I'm like, I think oh. you're getting me too as well in this operation. Yeah, right? I understand the anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be a little bit much. But, you know, the service there at at t not a sponsor, but <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> uh. Uh, I got this bad boy sent to me in the mail, so I didn't go through any of that. But what I did go through is after I select my phone with the appropriate discount from all my crude credits for being such a good little boy and not buying a phone for five years, they're like, oh, just one last thing. You'll just have to sign this agreement at the bottom of line. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, more agreements. It's 80 pages. They know I'm not going to read it. I know I'm not going to read it. Click, Mm -hmm. click. I'm pretty sure I agreed. I sold my soul. I'm I'm with uh, a local Canadian provider. Kudo. For a little mm-hmm. bit longer. At least until my firstborn comes along. Is it it's called probably, Kudo? It is called Kudo. It's probably that sounds part, so Canadian. Part it of is. that that contract probably does have to be sealed with a kiss. So they might come get you. They, they might come in for their smooches. And you know what? Yeah. I, I, I'm in for a smooch. Okay. All right. Even in these tar- dark times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a real roll of the dice, eh? <laughs> right? Yeah. Hey, stranger. <laughs> I'm not leaving without a kiss. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Uh, it's great. Yeah, I'm still rocking an iPhone 6, and it's fine because my wife has an iPhone 11. So if I need to take a nice picture for Instagram, I just ask her for her phone, and she rolls her eyes way far back into her head and gives it to me. That's so nice of her. Yeah. She's a lovely human. She is. So. That's fine. Kelly, what have you been up to? Um, I haven't been up to too much. We uh, just got a new car in the house. It's not my new car, but it is a new car under this roof. So that was exciting. I saw it. it was it's exciting. lovely. Yeah. It's a Subi, right? Yes. I uh, brought Scott into the um, Subaru side of the world, which I will never leave again. I've strayed once and it was such a mistake. Um, but yeah, no, he, he got a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek and it is nice. really a beautiful car. And they look so nicely tar- parked together in my driveway. My parents yeah. have a new Subaru too. So like the three nice. of them sit all nice together. It's 2019, 2020 and a 2021 all in a row. It's super nice. Now, a group of Subarus, is that called, like, when you get a, like, you got enough cows together, it's a herd. If you have enough Subarus. of crows, yeah. That's right. A bunch of Subarus, is that considered an outback of Subarus? I would say probably. Yeah. All right. Did you know that Subaru was the first car manufacturer to openly market to ladies who enjoy the company of other ladies? Oh. Very progressive. Back in the 90s. They are very progressive. But, you know, also, that's, that's very marketing like pointed because a lot of ladies that join the company of other ladies are also very outdoorsy. Mm -hmm. I've read that somewhere. So they, they recognized like five groups of people that predominantly bought Subarus. Right. And I think it was like, uh, doctors and outdoors people and, uh, like ladies that enjoy the companies of other ladies, teachers and educators. So they, targeted those five groups of people with all their their marketing so it was like featuring the car's ability to go you know a little bit off road that there's lots of uh capacity that they felt like the idea that a subaru was like sturdy but not too flashy and then some in there's uh in some of their media print it was like just like a couple of gals that you know uh were in front of the car and it was it was subtle 
it wasn't it wasn't all the way out there okay. it, 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 pals. it was like it was a like very gentle gay advertising and okay. it, it kind of like it sort of like was the first of its kind yeah that's that's cool i didn't know that they i'm gonna have to look this up more now because i didn't realize they were so progressive in that that advertisement's perspective one of my favorite advertisements from subaru that I ever saw was, I think it was like a 1992 Impreza. And then they have Kyle McLaughlin from uh, such gems as Dune. And uh, he was Agent Dale Cooper in Twin Peaks, which is one of my favorites. Mm. And he's just like propped up like real casual on the side of an Impreza. And it's just like so late 80s, early 90s. It's just amazing that he's like jiving out there on the side of this car. It's was he we- was he wearing a red velour jacket? No, I wish. I think he was in like a white jacket or something. But mm. it was it was really quite a stellar piece of art. Yeah, that's exciting that you guys got a Subaru. When you posted about it, and you're like, "We're a Subaru family." I'm like thinking about my black Nissan truck and Kayla's black Toyota Rav Four, and I'm like, "We're just a black car family, you know, <laughs> black vehicle family." That's but fair. I like that. Like we're matching, you know, and yeah. like I have. I have like black rims or hubcaps on my truck and I told her, I was like, I want to get yours like liquid dipped, I think it's called. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. so we're like completely matching, like just like all blacked out, like get her windows tinted too. Oh, you know, that's cool. Be a little fancy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's cool that we have the same make of car. It, it definitely fits our lifestyle you know what our needs yeah. are so i'm glad that we went towards that instead of any other options out there on the market it's just it was a good it was a good choice and now they they kind of match in the driveway and it's cool yes absolutely so i just got back from a little mini vacation in ohio pile pennsylvania it's like pile up of north- Ohio's. <laughs> yeah for the longest time i thought it was in ohio but it's actually in Pennsylvania. It's close to Pittsburgh. Um, what's really cool about this area, though, it's like a bunch of different state parks, one being Ohio Pile State Park. And they have a bunch of waterfalls, which Kayla and I saw at least four of them. Uh, some we had to hike to. It was thunderstorming like 90% of the time while we were there, which was a little disappointing. But with thunderstorms, you know, it'll it'll rain down real hard and crazy and you just wait, you know, a half an hour and then the sun comes back out. So we were able to wait out some of them. The one uh, waterfall though, we hiked three miles down to see it, which it took us a while just to find like the trailhead. It wasn't really marked that well. And uh, we were the only people on this trail. And finally we get to it and we're like, Oh, this is great. The wind's blowing the trees. I'm like, uh, we should probably leave. And then sure enough, it just started downpouring on us. I'm like, great. Um, so we had to hike back out of the mountain, uh, three miles upwards, uh, in a torrential downpour, but still had a really good time. Uh, I actually did a natural water slide. So it's like 50 feet of rock that water is flowing through. And either so many people have slid on these rocks that they're worn down or it's just the water but it's like a little like shoot in the rocks that you can slide down and the water level was like a little too low but if you look at kayla's instagram kelly um since you follow her mm-hmm. you you can see me like actually like picking up my legs and like sliding down these rocks and it was so much fun like i felt like a kid it was great that sounds fun yeah it was a good time no complaints. So, Bo, Ohio Pile, that's yes. where that Franklin Lloyd Wright famous uh, home yeah. is. Yep. Falling Did, water. Fa- yeah, falling yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. Did so you they, see that? Uh, I've been to it before. So because of the coronavirus, uh, they weren't doing any indoor tours, but we drove up to it because we were trying to kill time at one point, And we knew we had to like make reservations to do an outside tour. But it was thunderstorming, <laughs> so we didn't really want to do that. But we pull up, and they're like, oh, do you have a reservation? No. And they're like, oh, well, it's fine. Like, you can still go in. It costs $20. And we're like, $20 to, like, just walk outside, to drive around it. Oh, to walk outside. 
I'm like, okay, like maybe. And I was like, $20 per vehicle. And they're like, no, $20 per person. (laughs) And I was like, "Eh, no, like not in the rain. You know, like it's beautiful. Like you can see it from the pictures online. um, If you search up falling water, like it's beautiful architect with a waterfall, like going down the side of it, like crazy building. Um, but yeah, we opted out of it because we were just trying to kill time before we could check in to the cabin Airbnb. So yeah, nice. we so did not see it in person this time. How buck wild is that, by the way? Do you have a reservation to walk around the outside of our house? <laughs> During a thunderstorm. <laughs> That's going to cost you $40. 40 bones. Like, yeah, no, no thanks. That is like one of the, th- like a, a spot that I do want to see in some point in my life the house is super yeah his architecture is just really impressive it really is um it's beautiful but like i said you can search online and get the the true meaning of it without spending an arm and a leg that's exciting I'll yes have to check it out yeah and i mean just to go up there uh it was like a two and a half hour drive so not far at all hmm. yeah but uh, we are a beer podcast, so let's crack open our beers if we haven't already. I know I've been drinking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what are you guys drinking on? Dan, how about you? Well, I, I picked up a very special brew, especially for this occasion, this podcast. Yay. And it is from a, a, a local here to Ontario brewery called um, Bo's uh natural brewery i believe it's called and i so i'm drinking on bo's country vibes uh oh yeah yeah an amber lagered ale and this thing is like a a kind of a multi-mouth feel with like a crisp back end um with a lot of sort of balance in it like let me get onto this thing yeah it's like a teeny bit sweet on the nose it's like for a, a malted amber lager it's pretty smooth drinking and balanced and like that's a sweet spot for me like i want my beer to be flavorful but i don't want it to be like issuing a challenge to my mouth daring me to drink it yeah exactly so uh this is a this is an ontario brewery that's uh up near ottawa I don't know if you you guys uh, know the layout, but it's just like on the east end of Lake Ontario, but then north up into the woods. Because around uh, 1812, Canada got uh, a little bit wary of our neighbors to the south and decided we couldn't have our capital right on Lake Ontario. We had to put it inland a little bit up the St. Lawrence Seaway. Uh, So we have this deep in the woods capital for Ottawa. And so it's half the way up there in this place called, I think it's called, mm, give me a minute. Like uh, Van Leek Hill, Ontario. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, halfway to Quebec, basically. Um, and they they use all organic ingredients. So this is uh, certified organic by the Organic Canada or Organic Council of Canada and the USDA. So they get uh, all their hops and their malts. They're all pesticide free. Um, and this is uh, about as natural a beer as you can get. That's awesome. And that's how Sounds I would good. brew beer too. Heck yes. Being a Bose Country Ale or whatever you said it was. So it's like uh, it. It, it's Bose Country Vibes. And Vibes, uh, yes. just to correct my butchering of the name, it's uh, Bose All Natural Brewing Company. Mm. Okay. And uh, what's the ABV on it? I think this I think this kid rolls around 4.7%. Okay. Awesome. It's, it's nice. It's late. Yeah. What are the what's the brewery scene in Canada? Is it like well, America? Do you know? It's blown up. Like um, okay, probably yeah, about same. ten years ago, you started to mm-hmm. see a real expansion. Like we always had, um, like uh, some foundational breweries. Like up here, there's uh, Sleeman's that goes all the way back to Prohibition. They were whiskey and beer runners uh, back when Prohibition was on. Canada never had Prohibition. 
too many too many fur fur traders and Frenchmen yeah. for that. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, like actually, my family ran a brewery for uh, for a while there uh, down uh, near Presque Isle National Park called uh, Presque Isle Brewery, and uh, you can probably find there's probably like 200 really good ones in Ontario. Hmm. Oh, cool! That's yeah, cool. that's awesome. Yeah, so there's there's like a fair amount of them, and like you could probably hop in your car anywhere from Toronto and be in range of twenty or thirty good ones. They kind of hunker down around Toronto, and then there's there's breweries through the country because we have because of the Canadian Shield, we have uh, quite a bit of spring water that gets pushed through the granite. So you get this mm. really high quality spring water, which which you know, Bo and you know Kelly makes all the difference in your brewing yes. procedures. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that's awesome. I need some Canadian beer in my life. Well, yeah. buddy, if you ever find yourself north of the border, I will. Uh, I'll take you on a little beer jaunt. That offer is extended to you, there, Kelly. Great, Sounds I'll bring good. the maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you bring maple syrup to Canada? <laughs> offering, offering to cross the border. Duh. Uh, uh, Words of callback. I, thought, I thought they like, well, no, I thought they like Hershey's, Hershey's uh, chocolate. But, I mean, we can bring Hershey's chocolate. Yeah, now, we, got, we have a Hershey's chocolate factory here. We got one of those, but I but will never say no the, to chocolate. It's That's not true. The Hershey, Fact. which is really not really made here, but shh. You've crushed me with science, and I can't. I can't Sorry. oppose you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll we'll bring some uh, from Chocolate World, so it'll be like it's the real experience, but it's not. Um, yeah. I, you know what? I wonder what else is famous from PA. Like, what's PA's move oh that puts God. them on the Let map? Let me tell you. Snacks. A million yes. snacks. Pretzels. Pretzels. Snyder's. Chips. Pretzels. Chips. You uh, got Uts. Mar- Utz, Martin's, Hers. Those yeah. are all Pennsylvania. The, the Weekenders, which are like the best Middlesworth, barbecue chips. Yeah. Middlesworth. It, are these Gibbles. all chips? These are all chips. Uh, yeah, chips oh. and pretzels. And then Next. we also have Lebanon bologna, which you might not know what that is. A no, lot of I people don't, don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more of an Amish thing okay. it's where it's like – it looks red with like white specks in it. Sounds really weird, but it's a lunch meat and okay. it's super good. It's like smoked Sweet-y, bologna. Sweet, kind of smoky. Yeah. Very good. Now, on a scale of like natural to processed, where does uh, this fall into it? Oh, nobody man. knows. Nobody uh, knows. It's probably no. 100% processed, like. <laughs> Very processed. <laughs> because you but. said Amish or like Mennonite or, or whatever mm-hmm. you, you yeah. mentioned. That sounds to me like this salt of the earth. Like they ground up a cow and put some magic in it from the from the yeah. fields. Or is yeah. it like Schneider's like industrial plant? We made a slurry. We put some color into it. I don't know where we we're at. We have no idea. Yeah, right. we have no idea. There's, there's, I mean, you can get it at the grocery store and that kind is probably processed to all hell. Sure. But then you can get it. I I mean, you can get it from smaller butcheries and stuff, and I'm sure that's a little bit more natural, but the Amish are not known for a very healthy style of cooking. It's just lard everywhere. So I can't imagine, even if it is all natural, it being very good for you. (laughs) Yeah. So let me ask a different question. If I ate five of these, how would I feel? (laughs) Like oh, slices of Lebanon bologna? Slices is no you know big deal. No, that's fine. I yeah, had four you, slices on my sandwich yesterday. You roll those things up with a little like cheese stick, that's a great snack. Mm. Or peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Oh, peanut mm-hmm. butter? Really? Peanut butter, yeah, you're you a ever wild man, Bo. Yeah, I've never had that. You gotta try it. Peanut butter roll ups with Lebanon bologna. Mm. I don't know about that one. I don't like so peanut good. butter unless it's like I like peanut butter by itself and when it's with jelly or like ice cream or something sweet, but like I don't know. Like even peanuts and like pad thai kind of stuff kind of uh it's not I don't know. I you just like, like yeah. peanuts you with like sweet to stuff. be selectively nutted. You don't want to be just nutted everywhere. Yes, it is right. exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the beer that I'm drinking <laughs> is from Thomas Hooker Brewery. It is I bought this for you, Dan. Nice. It's be- called Sizzling Hippie. Nelson Citra IPA, and it has a guy at the bottom of the can wearing peace sign, sunglasses, bandana, and it looks like his head's just like smoking out. 
Oh, hell yeah. And, and you actually hit the, the, the nail on the head because uh, a little known Dank Dan secret is my last name is Thomas. Oh, yeah. nice. I love it. Um, so, yeah, this is like a juicy, hazy IPA. It weighs in at a 6.4%. And it has flavors of white grape and citrus. And I like it. It's good. White grape. I'm digging that. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Like a little winey, you know, like wine taste to it. It's solid. Like it's a, chill. A crisp finish is what I'm feeling off that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that sounds good. I have um, just a little, just a little basic, nothing special, but the uh, 1985 IPA from New Belgium. Mm, so good. And I know Ooh. I got you. I brought you some of these over on your birthday, um, mm-hmm. which reminds me, and I'll tell you here because. We're not on cameras or anything, so I can't give it to you. But I have your birthday gift. I, it finally came in the mail, so I have to give it to you. Ooh, thank you. Um, you so, didn't have to. Well, I wanted to. Um, so the beer is 1985 IPA from New Belgium. So it is a, let's see, 6.7 ABV. Um, and the can art, I think actually is like, it's one of the coolest can arts out there right now. I love it. It's super like nineties, eighties looking little, he's got like neon, like little Cobra Kai jacket on a little fanny pack, little shutter shades. I like Mm -hmm. it. Um, but it says on untapped that is like totally loaded with juicy mango flavor. 1985 takes you back to the future of hazy IPAs. Buckle up. It's made with citra. Simcoe and Cascade Hops. And I felt it was fitting to drink on the podcast because, I mean, 1985, the year of the NES, seems like a pretty good reason. There you go. So, yeah. And I had my, yeah, I had my last one yesterday uh, (laughs) that you gave to me uh, for my birthday, which yesterday was Dank Dan's birthday. Happy birthday, man. Oh, thanks, guys. Whoa, happy birthday. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for my birthday, I like to play golf and then <laughs> eat Indian food and then watch as much Batman as I can with my sweet, sweet lady until we, we fall asleep. That's, that's, that's the awesome. move right there. Thank Great you. Great day, actually. That's I how I like to great. do. I just got yeah. back into golf, actually, this oh, week. You, you golf, Kelly? I, I do, yes. I... um. I do. I have not golfed for about 20 years, <laughs> but I'm getting back into it. And How old are you, Kelly? You're Yep. What? Yep. No, so I you're... golfed when I was a kid. Like 8. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I golfed for from like the ages 5 or 6 to like 10. Nice. And uh yeah, cuz my parents were super big into golf and they got me, you know, my sister to do like golf lessons and junior golf you know, leagues and stuff like that. And then I decided I was, you know, a little jerk and I didn't want to do anything my parents did. So I stopped and then I decided, Hey man, you know, it sounds like it'd be pretty good stress relief to just hit this little ball with a club and watch it go real far. So I went and hit golf balls with my mom today and I, uh, I still got it. That nice. sounds fun. Nice. Yeah. I've actually never gone golfing before besides mini golf. So. Wow. Well, it's, if it, you ever want to learn, I'll teach you. It's got some okay. good stuff that you would love, Bo. Number one, it's outdoorsy as hell, right? Mm-hmm. You're in the I sun. Like it's beautiful. The wind's blowing and nobody's bothering you. Number two, beer is highly encouraged. Oh almost God, yeah. core to the sport. Um, yeah. If, I don't know I if like you're that. a cigar guy. I am. Cigars also I welcome. Used to be. Yeah. Got off that wagon, eh? I uh, got off the nicotine. Good man. Yeah. Good man. Yeah, it's been since uh, December since I've had anything nicotine. So, yeah. Congratulations. Now, the other yeah. thing uh, that I have to share with you guys is I was that young whippersnapper when I was like 12 or 13. I started hating on golf so hard. Anyone was going golfing, any of my friends, I would make fun of them, how bad of the sport it was, how stupid it was. And like, I would, I would make very bad jokes. Like I was like, you know why they call it golf, right? Because shit was already taken. (laughs) 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 Like other really bad goofs like that. 
And then it turned the corner and uh, I forget, why did I originally, why did I end up going golfing? A group of my friends were going for some reason. Uh, I think it was a bachelor party and it was kind of non-optional. Like if you were opted out of that, you opted out at all the festivities. And I went and did it and I loved it. It is mm-hmm. so satisfying to smack that ball with your driver and just oh to see God. it sail. Glorious. is glorious. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I had had to eat all my words because everyone had heard me bitch about golf for like 20 years. And they're like, all right, you're in now. You're one of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Golf is good. Yeah, someday. Um, I like Frisbee golf, actually. Have you guys ever done that? I have not. Is, so, that, is that called froth sometimes? Yeah. Or disc golf. Disc golf. That's what they call it in Europe. Mm. Yeah. So it's. You have a bunch of different discs, like a driver, mid-range, a putter, uh, just like regular golf. You're hiking in the woods, and you have nets or baskets that you have to hit. And a hole-in-one is when it actually like hits the net and goes into the basket, almost like sort of like a basketball hoop, but like a 360 without a backboard. Um, and it's fun. I mean... Drinking is encouraged too. Not that you're really allowed to half the time, but it's encouraged. <laughs> it's free, so you don't need a club membership. You just need the the actual disc, yep. and you just go out. Yeah, and there's yeah. a bunch of different parks around us, Kelly. Yeah, I've seen so. I've seen some disc golf yeah, nets, baskets, wh- whatever you call them. When I'd be out, you know, like walking around at a park or mm-hmm. something. It sounds like yeah, golf for someone who would enjoy to hacky a sack, perhaps. Yes, that absolutely. Would, that would seem that way, yeah. So let's get into the Purple Dungeon Squid podcast and what you guys are all about. Uh, before we do the interview with you, Dan, um, one of my favorite parts about the podcast is your sponsored ad reads. And these sponsored ad reads are fake. They're funny as hell. You've done them almost all of your podcasts for a little bit. You didn't, and I demanded them to come back, and I'm glad that they did recently. Um, So your co-host, Andy, says a series of words that he makes up, and you improv whatever is on your head with those words. So are you down to do this with us? This is I don't know if I really explained it that well, but like I think just doing it people will know what we're doing. Yeah, no, you got it totally. It's it's for our podcast that didn't have sponsors yet. We wanted to, in our show notes, we had a spot for sponsors. And yes. as a joke, Andy filled in a bunch of fake sponsors, and then I did them. So <laughs> it, it became enshrined in the podcast. And um, I'm, you told me it was one of your favorite parts, and I think it would yes. be awesome if we did it. So yeah, let's, let's see how I do. All right, sounds good. I am ready. So... Now for our sponsors, this episode of Precisely Podcast is brought to you by Velcro Shoes for Adults. Hi. Ever since I put this crayon way too far up my nose, tying my shoes has been a big hullabaloo. Now, with Velcro Shoes, it's no problem. (laughs) Ready to go, Mom. (laughs) I love it. Watering your plants with Gatorade. Are you watering your plants with just water? You idiot! It's time to get extreme. Your plants will be able to play frisbee golf. Be (laughs) extreme downhill on whatever you have in the building. If you're not watering your plants with Gatorade, you better die. Offer now available in Kroger in the plant murder aisle. Oh, I love it. Kelly, do you got one? Yeah. Brought to you by three-day-old Chinese food. Hi. Have you had food poisoning recently? No? I direct you to your fridge. That Pad Yang Sung, it's not getting any better. And let's not kid ourselves. You're not above eating that food. So get in there, champion. It's free, and you're not going to go anywhere else. I love it. Brought to you by licking the back of a frog. (laughs) Hey, Tom, you feel anything yet? Yeah, yeah, no, I can see the devil, too. I I don't think we should have done that. I don't think we should have done that at all. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. That was good. That was amazing. Very well done. 
That was so great. <laughs> so we actually do have a legitimate sponsor this episode. Uh, Laurel Highlands Poor Tour reached out to me earlier this week. So their new Poor Tour is from the – it's their second year doing it. It begins Friday, September 18th during Greensburg Craft Beer Week. They have 17 breweries participating in the Poor Tour. And – their full list is on their website. So if you just search up Laurel Highlands Poor Tour, it's up where Ohio Pile is, Pittsburgh area, a um, bunch of different breweries. And it goes until the end of 2021. And each brewery that you go to, you have like a little stamp card. You get a sticker or a stamp at each brewery, and you can turn in that stamp card for prizes. So they have bottle openers t-shirts and an insulated growler and personally after hearing about this i am planning on visiting next year to do the poor tour with my wife yeah it sounds absolutely awesome i love any any reason to go on a brewery tour where you binge drinking multiple (laughs) breweries in a day yeah and but like also just like seeing a new brewery is just so exciting and then trying their flagships and just enjoying it. It's just, and then you get to go to the next one. Oh, it's just such a good time. So this sounds, I'm I'm looking at the list of the breweries. I have not been to any of these and I definitely want to go. Yeah. So one of one that I recognized off the list was voodoo brewery company, which is in Pittsburgh, really cool brewery they have like a bunch of arcade games inside all their walls inside are graffitied um they even have like murals on the ceiling so it's like the 16th chapel you know but with graffiti uh really good beer though too (laughs) hey homie did you just say the 16th chapel yeah i did is that wrong it's uh it's the sistine chapel (laughs) my dude (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you're like those 15 other chapels pure shit this is the one yeah. this, this is the 16th one god bless you <laughs> bless your heart made oh my you know it, it's just that's how it's always been in my life so i feel you i, say I feel yeah. you <laughs> yeah either way let's uh get back to you dan uh this has been a long podcast already talking about nonsense we're 42 minutes deep into it and i'm loving it yeah, I'm loving it, honestly. So give our listeners a rundown of what Purple Dungeon Squid is. Like, what does an ep- episode sound like? So uh, the Purple Dungeon Squid is uh, a podcast about weed and video games. So mm-hmm. we kind of took the two things that we had the most authority to speak on, which is, in truth, very little, and the things we enjoyed the most, and we slapped this together, me and Andy. So something you got to know about me and Andy, we've been really good friends for about 15 years, and we always have a project going on. Like, it's a writing project, or like we used to have this uh, – this podcast, or, uh, this website called uh, Geek Safari, where we play board games and review them. So we're always doing something, mostly because Andy is such a structured guy. If he doesn't have like a reason, quote unquote, to be doing something, he won't do it. Like I couldn't call up Andy and say, "Come chill at my house." He's not a chill guy, but what he is is a project guy, and he'll put both of his shoulders into it and make a project happen. So we're always making something up for an excuse to like hang out and do our things because he's got kids and he's got like a really big time, important job and no extra time. So we started this podcast in uh, a warehouse uh, near the airport. And just threw the thing together. So we basically, we, we, uh, jock, jockey around like we have on this podcast. Then we review a couple games. We smoke some strains live on the pod and like review them a little bit. And sort of the conceit of the podcast is Andy and I get really high and then try to hold the podcast together <laughs> into some reasonable recording. And so that's like the challenge to ourselves the whole time. And by the end of it, we usually have something that's reasonably, uh, you know, entertaining and hopefully funny. Yeah, I mean it's super funny. I it's like I've said before, it's one of my favorite podcasts and it was the first podcast that got me listening to podcasts. I think I started talking to you guys on Instagram when I started my page and you're like, Come on into this group chat and ever since we've been in the same group chat together talking about your guys' episodes and eventually I was like, you know what? I wanna do my own podcast and I wanna do it similar to you guys, but 
you know, with my own take. And that's why I started precisely with beer and video games because I like drinking beer. You know what, man? Like you hit the ground running with such a stellar po- like podcast, so well put together, and I think it helps that you're just such an awesome dude, just like a a really Aww. great guy, like easy to talk to, which translates so well on on the pod. And you know, uh, Tony was great, and then uh, you know Kelly comes in, and she's such a great addition too. Um, that I really enjoyed like listening to it change and become what it is today. And it, like in my heart of hearts, Purple Dungeon Squid and the Precisely podcast are like sibling podcasts. You know what I yes. mean? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're like cousins. a sister cast. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I should call it a brother or a sister cast, but I like, I think sister cast sounds right. Right. Yeah. I think, yes. well, because most people say it's like a sister so and so. Mm-hmm. I think sister cast would be the right term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we so, can say yeah. Yes. Precisely, uh, pronouns are, 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 are her then. Sure. <laughs> for it. I really, okay, cool. I really don't care. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's great. Yeah. So, weed and video games. Um, you, how long have you guys been doing it for? Uh, it, it feels like forever. Um, yes. <laughs> no, it's uh, probably like you, what's, what you really got to understand is like you've been around for about a year and a bit. Does that sound right? A yeah. year and a half now. Yeah. Okay. So we've been around for about three years and we have almost the same amount of episodes. <laughs> I think we have more episodes. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. I try to soften the blow on myself, but yeah. So you guys are more consistent producers, but yeah, we've been doing it for, for about three years and, uh, and we've been sort of getting a, really the truth is every three weeks, we probably put in an episode. Yeah. And you know what though? Like when I first started listening to you guys, you might've been like six or seven episodes deep into it. And I listened to all of them and I'm like, Where's the next one? Where's the next one? Mm-hmm. And just pushing for it. But it's a podcast. And it's also like us as well, Kelly. Like It's a podcast that doesn't really age because we're not talking about news heavy stuff you, mm-hmm. like you guys sometimes bring it in but usually you're like a month late to your news that's right like you're talking about something that <laughs> happened a really long time ago that's correct when it comes to news hey andy <laughs> and did you hear the berlin wall came down yeah but right gorbachev was there <laughs> <laughs> breaking <laughs> yeah you're like uh the ps3 is gonna be announced so oh, wait no um but no either way like it's a podcast that people can go back to and listen and be like, Oh yeah, this is a great game that they're talking about. That's not necessarily a new game that they're reviewing. It's just a game that they picked up and sounds great to me. So now I want to play it, you know? Yeah. 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 And we kind of, we kind of, um, we almost called, um, the podcast, like two blowhards, like, because he, he and I just go on forever and ever. But the truth is, is like, we're, we come at it as like, the, we're not experts. We're kind of just like gamers and we're, we're, yeah, we're casual. Sm- we're smokers and we kind of throw our opinions out. And, you know, Andy works uh, in the weed industry at a high level and I have a very strong IT background and we have very different opinions about just about everything. So you kind of, no matter what side of it you're on, you're probably going to hear an opinion that you haven't heard before and you're going to hear one that you probably agree with a little bit. So it, it, it has a kind of thing where it works that in that way. Yes. I agree. So where did the name Purple Dungeon Squid come from? It's it's funny you should ask because Andy and I are sitting there in this warehouse by the airport and listening to planes go overhead. And he's arguing that the name has to be perfect and have (laughs) perfect SEO. And it has to be the first thing you think of. And when you hear it, it's got to tell you everything that you're going to talk about in the podcast. And I had the total opposite uh, opinion. I said, it actually doesn't matter what we name the podcast. Yeah. In fact, the weirder we name it, the better. I could come up with anything. And he had like a list of like things written down, which I have to say are like, we're really, really good SEOs. Like they would search on the internet really well. And he's like, okay, we'll come up with one right now. And I'm like, Purple Dungeon Squid. And he's like, that's actually really, really good. And yeah. and that's how it came about. It was just like so that. just pulled it out of your ass and right out of your, my ass like it kind of like purple is kind of like a weed thing like if you think of purple mm-hmm. weed that's really good weed video games you know dungeon squid kind of feels like a, a like a, a video game sort of sprite and we 
if you look at the podcast art, it kind of it has that sort of neon NES vibe to the logo. Um, same with the intro song. So we just folded that in because we were gonna we were gonna fight over it forever. So we just threw it and just ran with it. And I honestly I couldn't think of any other thing to call it. Like like it today right now, if I could go back and change it, Purple Dungeon Squid is perfect. Yeah, I love it. And it's easy enough to remember. It's catchy enough, even though it's like a bunch of different words. Yeah, there's so actually what? no other podcast that has the word purple in it. So what? Yeah, like if you type in purple, like we're on um, we're on Spotify and iTunes, and if you type in purple in podcast section, no other nothing else starts with purple. At least it didn't the last time I wrote. So we're kind of we're on our own. <laughs> I love it. So because you guys do weed and video games. Have you ever been too high while uh, recording a podcast? Because you do smoke halfway through each episode. Oh, man. Uh, 50% of the time, I'm too high. <laughs> to be honest with you, like, uh, I, like Dank Dan sounds like he's a dude that smokes all the time. But I, I don't, actually. I, I smoke pretty sparingly. Um, but I do smoke for the, pa- the podcast. And I do enjoy it to, to blaze every now and again. But the weed that I get given... It's like this nuclear weed. Like we're getting like 33% potency, uh, Chiba. And so I, I dive too deep on ganja about half the time. And like there's, there's a point in the podcast at, at some point you can hear like the, 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 um, the airlocks blow on the purple dungeon pod and we're like floating in space. <laughs> like yes. you can, you can see like when I start to a- a- ask Andy if he thinks I'll ever be able to go to the moon and he without talking, he did without hesitating says, nah, you're never going to the moon. And I'm like really offended. I'm like, how dare you? How dare you yeah. besmirch my trip to the moon? That's when you know we're just like just a little too high. <laughs> yeah i mean there's definitely some episodes where i'm just like listening to you guys and i'm like oh yeah like either andy's like not listening to whatever you're saying and you're going on this big spiel mm-hmm. about something and then it's andy's turn to talk essentially and he's just like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like bro like <laughs> dan's been on it for five minutes straight and you just have yeah. <laughs> now it's hard to know with Andy because bless his heart, sometimes he just stops listening at the soberest of times. Good. Yes, God bless that's him. Who, yes, that's yeah, one of yeah. his moves. <laughs> yes, that's his superpower. <laughs> <laughs> He's got. You know how some people have like multitasking minds. Like yes. you can be thinking about a thing and doing a thing and maybe talking to something. Andy has the power of singular focus, which is great because you, he can dive into a task and he can be at it for, he'll look up and the sun will be down and he'll still be working. So that's the superpower yeah. side of it. But the other thing is you could be talking to him the whole time. He's getting zero. He's getting nothing. Yes. I love it. So on the, uh, on the game side of it though, what's your earliest memory of gaming? We had uh, an Atari 2600 uh, in my house, mm. and I wish I was thinking about it because I knew we'd be talking about it on the cast today. Like, where did that thing come from? I called my dad. I asked him. I called my mom. I asked her. No one has any idea where this this Atari 2600 came from. And the games we had for it were like, they're more like the mere suggestion of games, you yes. know, at that <laughs> age. Like, they, I had one that there's like, it's like a cowboy and it's like uh, you're looking at them from the side, and you have to get your little square white or, or like reticle on them and hit the button before you get killed, and you never could. So I'm like, but there's uh, there's no explanations for this. But I was so fascinated no. by the games, I would play them over and over. There was really no way to even quote unquote pro- progress, like even jump jack. Yeah. It's just like it's one level that kind of recirculates type thing. Yeah. Um, but my imagination was peaked. And uh, I, when I heard about the Nintendo, I sort of uh, begged my parents for it. My mom was like a hard no. She's like, a, at the time, was a deeply fundamental Christian. And that just sounded like a, the, the gateway to the devil in her mind. Um, she, she's recovered a bit now. But so it was a hard no. But then here comes grandma in the Christmas back door. Boom, yes, the present's grandma. there. The present gets open. Uh, me and my brother are losing our minds because here's a Nintendo. And as a mom, it's too late. You can't put that lightning back in that bottle, right? So uh, we ended up with an NES, and like the rest is history. That sort of really started me down the, the gaming path. 
I love it. Yeah, man. Um, so, do you have a favorite game that you love to play or genre of game? You know, it, I think it comes down to, like, systems. Like, for all the old school systems, I really love uh, side-scrolling brawlers. Because uh, having a brother that's really close in age, two-player was the way you, you, we kind of always had to go. And the ni- nice thing about NES is there's just this plethora of two player games. It was almost assumed, you know what I mean? Like your game better have a second player so strongly that like Mario got Luigi and it's basically a one player game where you're taking turns. <laughs> They're just like, you better make it two player. They're like, yeah, we can figure that out. I think, you know, <laughs> they yeah. kind of crowbar it in there. Um, you know, you know, Old school games, you know, I, I want to say that, like, I love RPGs, but I don't play that many of them these days because a lot of, like, it feels like the formula has gotten a little bit old. But when I think of what games I'm playing, anything that comes out, especially because we have the podcast now, anything that's coming out, I probably buy it and, and play it. Like, I don't know about you, but I have never before the podcast played a, like, sports game, like, went out and bought one with my own money and put it in the tray. But no, because never. we're doing the Purple Dungeon Squid, I own the show 2018. And I kind of like it. That said... The baseball game? Yeah, yeah. I What, what okay. got me into it was they made it like an RPG because I could make my own pitcher and yeah. make him however I want to look and then train him however I want and then, you know, get that fastball going up to 100 miles an hour. And then what I realized is baseball is like this complicated game of rock, paper, scissors with other stuff mm-hmm. added on. So it's like fastball, change up to throw them up, inside fastball. So it became like, a, I actually started to love baseball because of the show 2018. It like dragged me in. Interesting. Kind of wild day. But if, I, if I'm trying to answer your question, I kind of love all games, man. I don't really play sports games. But other than that, I'll, I'll play anything. Yeah, I'm the same way. Kelly, are you there? Yeah, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, did, I wanted I, to give Kelly I, a beat too. No, no, my 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 thing closed. Um, ah. So, do you collect games, Dan? And if so, what are your favorite systems? You know, if you ask my sweet sweet lady, I collect games, but compared to you guys, not at all. Um, we, uh, I would say, my favorite systems down the line, anything before PlayStation One, before. N64. I'm full Nintendo guy. I got a, a, mm. an NES with probably somewhere in my basement, like 350 titles. Wow. Um, because uh, my mom one day came home from church with these two Rubbermaid bins of Nintendo games. And what had happened was some of the other kids that went to our church got in such bad trouble uh, oh. I don't know, like listening to rock and roll or something that their parents had given away all their games and they wow. had like a ridiculous amount of games. So it, I went from having like five games, double dragging contra and, you know, uh, duck hunt, uh, super Mario. And, um, uh, what's the, 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 the karate one. Is it just called karate kid? It's yeah, the one. There's, there's just karate. Yeah. That's the one Black label one. Yeah, where it's, I think it's side side scrolling and you can get past the first three levels, but then it's the birds and the birds will just, just murder you. It, you have to like, you, there's this low kick move that's like completely the cheap move, but eventually all you can do is the slide kick where you're like, cha, 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 cha. I'm doing a terrible uh, (laughs) explanation of this thing. But uh, is it River? Is it River City Ransom? No, no, no. It's it's pure okay. side scroll, like one D. You don't have that like uh, amph- anthropomorphic sort of three D effect. But yeah, I think it's just karate that you're talking about. Yeah, I think you're right. And so then we had every in my mind, we had every game that ever existed, including some really niche Christian titles. Like I had this game called I think it's called Bible Warrior, and it's like uh. It's like um, Dragon Warrior, but you're going around and picking up the armaments of God, which like pulls from Bible verses where like there's this verse that's talking about like 
bringing the word of God as like your shield and your faith as this sword. So these have been turned into literal items and sca- sca- scattered through this RPG world where you're like picking up these items to eventually go up against the ultimate evil. And I got to say, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so yeah, I actually just came across a couple of these titles. I found King of Kings and Bible Buffet recently and popped them King of cool. Kings. And it was quite an interesting time, I gotta say. So I can only imagine what that was like. I, I think, do you know? Do you know King of Kings? Yes. Yeah, like, so, do you know like what you do in it? King of Kings is kind of buck wild, as I recall. Yes. <laughs> it has this like super solid background. Not like the a- the assets are pretty few, f- like far and few between. And then, uh, you're riding like a camel. And your camel spits as like a weapon, and you're dodging like cactuses. Yeah, um, it's kind of that's a wild game. It was it was weird. The other thing was it would like pop up random, you know, like Bible trivia questions. And for me, I was not raised on religion, so I'm just like guessing, but somehow getting them all right. So <laughs> I was like doing pretty well there for a hot second, and I was like, maybe I have like subliminally like taken this in somehow from yeah from something and i know Bathsheba. that feels like a good answer (laughs) yeah sure that looks looks right that looks like a bible something yeah we can do that (laughs) this is so wait go ahead which which game is uh the one where you're moses and you're throwing baby jesus Mm, let's find out i'm gonna google this thing because it might just be called moses um, oh, Bible Adventures NES. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, three Wisdom Tree titles, or three or yes. four, I think. It's a light blue cartridge, and you would buy it. Like all these Bible games, you would buy from like a Christian bookstore. Like they weren't officially licensed by Nintendo, but some Christian guy had a bunch of these uh, cartridges, I guess, and wanted to get it in, into the hands of Christian kids. I don't know. Well, that super that weird alone staved away the devil from your Nintendo system. So true. This is like something that Christianity does. Is um, they haven't come up with anything new um, since like, hey, instead of uh, feeding kids alcohol, we'll give them gra- grape juice instead. Because communion used to like legit give everybody in the church wine, so you have like kids drinking yeah. wine. They're like, that's their la- latest innovation. Since then, Christianity's been playing de- defense, right? So, pop yeah. culture comes up like something like rock music, and they notice all these kids wanting to watch rock music. We'll make something just as good, but Christian. So, you get like all these Christian rock bands, like DC Talk, you ever heard of mm-hmm. that? I believe mm-hmm. it's a uh, direct to Christ talk. And I legitimately had some of their tapes and you know, it actually wasn't that bad, but they're doing this on all fronts. You know what I mean? Uh, they're making they're like kids these days. They're loving those Vigimo games. We'll make our own Christianly video games. I think the problem is when they go and look at the source material, there's some buck wild stuff in the Bible, like Moses that gets put like in a basket and then sent down river. His parents are like, ah, oh, you don't have much of a chance. Let's put this baby in the river. Or, yeah. or um, what's another another good one? Like, uh, um, I forget if it's Isaiah or something. I think I, this this father is being tested by God, and he's like, "All right, you're gonna have to take your son out into the mountains and then sacrifice yeah, and, and sacrifice yeah. him to me. You'll do it because you love me, right?" And he's like, "Okay, God, like this is pretty tough, but uh, yeah. yeah, we'll go do it." So he takes his son all the way up there, you know, and he's right about to plunge his knife the knife into and his God's son. Like, no, no, don't do it. Psych. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about an awkward walk joking, home. Man. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, yeah. God told me that I had to kill you as a test of faith and I was yeah. gonna do it. And but God was also in that burning bush shit, and that's how he told me. So, so yeah. we'll get ice cream on the way home and it'll be fine. That'll be all yeah. good. The, the thing about the burning bush is so in that part of the world there's something called the Akashic bu- Akashic book bush. And it actually yeah. has uh, psychedelic compounds in it. So if you did yes. sit by this burning bush, you might talk to God. Yeah. That's was that in your podcast, or did I hear that somewhere else? Uh, I, we may have talked about it. This is the kind of on-topic okay. conversation we might have. <laughs> yeah, because I just learned about that. So it was either your, you guys or maybe Joe Rogan. I don't know, but uh, yeah. JRE definitely That's talks like, about it. He does. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. 
I just listened to his most recent podcast on Spotify today. It was his first episode and went for five and a half hours. Dear and, Lord. And I, you know, I work and I I work with one headphone in, one headphone out. And uh, I usually have to like turn the headphones off to like talk to a customer or fellow employee or my boss. That podcast lasted me the whole day at work, and that never happens. <laughs> like I'm just like, this is going on forever. But it, it was super funny. Highly recommend this this most recent one. Yeah, I'm glad we can give some give some amplification to this up and coming podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. So, uh, <laughs> what's your favorite piece in your collection? Do you have like a, a holy grail? Like, boy, I would have to because. To be honest, like I, you guys have really brought me into like the video game collector mindset, and right yeah. right now I'm thinking about a train game. I don't know why, but I, you know, <laughs> I I think of my collection as like this. I love every piece in, of of it because it's kind of they're all kind of sentimental to me. But if I had to think of something like I have Mega Man One, which I think is kind of rare. Um, it ha- yeah. it has some like weird art on the front. Um. I have Mega Man 2 as well, which I, I think is kind of rare, but probably not. Um, wh- what do I have that would be at all? I think impressive? higher the number, the rarer it is. Well, I have, when it comes to the Nintendo Mega Man, really? but I could be wrong. So yeah, I think Mega Man 6 would be the rarest. So I definitely have Mega Man 1 to 5. I don't think I have 6. Um, I, I wonder if I have anything that's really rare. Like I have Mighty Morphin Power What's the Rangers. What's thing that you display on your shelf, or do you... Do you just keep everything in buckets yeah, far like, away from, from your lady? Uh, uh, mostly what gets displayed now is like uh, statues. Like I have various, like I have a, a Mega Man statue. I have like okay. a Jean-Luc Picard statue. You know, I've like, there are more things that can blend in with the sort of mise-en-scene of our house. Uh, my okay. my games are either in, it's in a basement at my parents' house, or I have a small cabinet of stuff in there. I have a, an original game genie. How rare are those bad boys? Uh, not that right. Yeah. Like Twenty bucks rare or not? Yeah, super bad to pay for. Yeah, like I, I'm trying to think what's like what's something that I haven't seen like crazy. I have this game called Scat. You ever heard of Scat? I think so. I feel like I have. Okay, so it's basically Jetpack Contra. Scat stands for Special Cybernetic Attack Team. And it's it's like uh, basically contra if both your guys had jetpacks. That sounds okay. Pretty rad. It's yeah. it's pretty dope. I have this other thing called this other game called um, um, uh, Twin Eagles. You know Twin Eagles. Mm-mm. Never heard of that. Okay. I do know Scat though. I just looked it up. Yeah, it's um, a shmup. A two-player shmup I would play with my brother. Uh, and to me, like, I didn't know shoot 'em ups were, like, at the time, like, a genre. And it was the first time I'd ever seen something like that. And for the the day, it has, like, just, it's, like, really fast-paced action. I, know, I have another game called Jackal. You ever heard of Jackal? Yeah. So you're oh, both, yes. you're both Jeeps. And the screen kind of moves. Yes. And there's power ups mm-hmm. and stuff. It has this like wicked soundtrack. I'm p- pretty sure it's uh, fairly thrashing metal. It really slaps. Uh, that's that. Th- that's something I haven't seen. You know, a lot of. But I don't like. It's hard for me to gen- identify any of my gems because I haven't like looked through them uh, with that Dude, lens. Honestly, if you if you have 350 plus Nintendo games, I'm sure you have at least 10 gems in there that are like. A hundred plus dollars or more, even if they're cartridge only. Really? Like you? I mean, you might have a Samson, you know, which is a two thousand dollar cartridge. So it, little Samson, and that that is an actual like Bible game, but officially released by Nintendo. Oh wow! So if it's a, you should definitely look. If it's a Bible game, I have a pretty decent shot at owning it. There you go. It was a great cartridge, and it was like one of the last. Uh, Nintendo games that came out, but Little Samson is Samson and Goliath, I believe, from the Bible. Uh, and it, it's a fun, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, the guy with the hair. So Samson and Delilah. So Samson's a great cautionary tale in the Bible. So Samson's this dude that God has given uh, like Herculean level strength. He's yeah. like the strongest yep, guy yep, yep. around. And Delilah shows up, 
and he loves Delilah and he's got this like wicked hair and she te- keeps telling him that he needs to cut his hair and mm-hmm. he refuses because he's a wild man and he's his own man and he knows that Delilah is not going to take no for an answer so, and knows he's going to like cut he's, she's going to cut his hair in the night so he like wears a fake wig that she then cuts like a so smart. like like a like a terrible per- human, and uh, he's like, "Psych, still got my hair, still super strong." But then she does finally cut his hair, and he loses his strength, and he gets his eyes gouged out. And in his final act, um, God gives him back temporary strength, and he like pulls the pillars of this temple he's chained to down, and he kills everybody. Yeah. A nice bedtime yeah. story. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, truly. So this this is little Samson. So he like kicks ass. Nice, and I think it's like four levels. But it's a two thousand dollar cartridge nowadays. That's that's on brand for Samson might be, for sure. Yeah, I mean it might be like twelve hundred, but it's been a while since I looked it up. But yeah, it's a rare game. Um so you should definitely look it up. So I, I likely don't have that one just because if you said it's at the end of the life cycle, um uh, D Day for these sweet children that we got the game from probably happened about halfway through the life cycle. So Samson's mm-hmm. probably not included, sadly. Mm-hmm. You never know. You never know. Next time you're at your parents, you should uh, take a picture of everything and send it to me. I will, brother. I will for sure. And I'll let you know. Yeah. So uh, to get off off of the NES talk for a moment with the new generation of consoles coming out here, uh, are you going to be an early adopter for either of the platforms at all? I'm in a tough bind because I'm normally not an early adopter. I want them to work out all the kinks. I want the red ring of death to hit somebody else. I want to maybe see a price drop. Maybe, maybe. Um, but with me doing the pod, I might have to buy that, that early PS5. So I'm like really conflicted about that, Kelly. It's like it, I'm in a real quandary. I agree. I'm kind of in a, in a quandary myself. I, uh, I need a new Xbox in in a way that I'm still running the original Xbox One. Like, I don't have the Xbox One X or any of the other letters that came after it. Mm-hmm. So this baby's just been trucking for years. And uh, I feel like it's just going to shit the bed on me one day and I'm going to be fucked. And uh, the other thing is, is that we've got the PS5 coming out with a Ratchet & Clank launch title, which is my game. And it's like, what... What am I supposed to do? <laughs> like yeah, that that's a PS5 price tag is also kind of scary right now too. With with only one game that I want currently. I mean, there's a lot of other games that are coming out for it that are definitely, you know, going to be great games, but buying that very expensive system for almost one game alone and I don't even buy PS Plus, I only buy the Xbox Live, you know. So I don't I don't know. It's just it's a hard spot to be in right now. That choice. Who knows? Um let's see. What of our our next question we have for you? Um All right. What's your favorite game to play while high? I really really enjoy um single player uh, throwing on any of the new Batmans because you can just load up a game and just cruise around the city and when you're feeling it drop down and just thrash the ever loving shit out of 6 to 10 guys and that's that's enjoyable I think at any speed so like a an open world kind of vibe more than than anything else yeah like an arkham city or an arkham knight um i i used to have um an xbox that i had modded to have like a hundred billion games on it and Mm -hmm. we would play xbox roulette and just play something random and we'd end up playing just the craziest most weird versions of games like I, i was talking about on the pod the last pod um there's like a thousand different street fighters because the modding community, the competition community back when it was just arcade cabinets made all these different variations of street fighter. Like this one, the fireballs are purple and they go triple speed or everybody goes 10 times speed or throws do four times the damage. Some of them have like palette swaps. People's colors are inverted. And we, we actually had to make a rule that this, this roulette, we, we do no street fighter because 10% of the hundred thousand games were street fighter titles modded to be crazy. So it was really fun to do that, but we'd always finish the night with versus Tetris 
a, like usually like Mar- uh, either Dr. Mario or Tetris two player showdown. That's a really good inebriated game. Yeah, I can see how a, like a retro game would be a really good thing to play while you're high because you can just sit back and just enjoy it. You know, like you don't have to worry about all the complexities of of, you know, like a three dimensional open world vibe. Yeah. This will hit you where you live. If you're having like a, a party and everybody's hitting that special time when when everybody's feeling glowing and warm, if you pull out any version of Mario Kart, you're going to be a superstar. Oh, God. Yeah. I agree. And you can learn a lot about people by what character they select. Like if somebody picks uh, Bowser, you know that they're a dick. <laughs> that they're out to get you. They want to crush your life. They want to steal your girlfriend. Like that's what's up. Somebody who's playing Toad, you can you can trust them with your life. You know what I mean? You know they're a kind heart, a beautiful soul. That's thank you. I appreciate that. Are you are you a Toad? Are you Toad Lass? I I, I like I like Toad on the uh, N sixty four. But when we get into the newer ones, I usually go for Daisy when she's an option. Mm. Now Daisy. is. Is Daisy Luigi's girlfriend? Is that how uh, that works? I guess. Mm. I guess it's essentially, it's essentially like you have the yin and the yang of each character. So she yeah. is the yin or yang, however you look at it, to Peach as is the Luigi is to Mario as is Wario and Waluigi. And then I guess you could even say that they're yin and yang to Mario and Luigi. But then there is no yin and yang to Peach and Daisy. I don't know, man. This I get it. Deep. That metaphor got into trouble, but I got what you were getting at. I got to throw it out there. If somebody picks Yoshi, what does that mean about them? What do you think? Oh. Uh, I always pick Yoshi. So, yeah, please. Go. Uh, all right. Um, no, no, no. Don't change what you're going to say. <laughs> no. I was not. I was going to. I shouldn't have said it. No, I was going to say one of my one of my close friends always picks Yoshi, too. And okay. he's just he's just brings chaos wherever he goes. So I would say mm-hmm. Yoshi is a true chaotic being. I feel yes. I feel you on that. I was going to say Yoshi definitely eats ass. Mm, that tongue, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a horrible Yoshi impersonation, but I think it was pretty yeah. good. I think it was like, <laughs> <laughs> so like in Super Mario World, you, uh, Super Mario's definitely punching Yoshi in the back of the head, right? Yeah, yeah. Like to get him have to stick his seen, tongue out. Yeah, have you ever seen two ducks fuck? Um, I want to say no. I'm okay. definitely saying no. So it's sort of like that with uh, Super Mario World, where the male duck will get on top of the female duck, usually in a body of water, and poke at the back of her head and push it down into the water. But when she comes back out of the water, she's like, blah, 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 <laughs> like trying to catch her breath. And it, it's a horrible sight to see, and it's even worse hearing it. But yeah, when I lived out on a farm in Oregon, I would hear it every time I was in the garden working. And I'm like, oh, there's another duck getting fucked. All right. Country vibes, Bo. Those are some country vibes. Yes. <laughs> I, I want to not say what I'm about to say, but I can't stop. Did you know okay, do it. that a duck's <laughs> penis is shaped like a corkscrew? No. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to see this, so, but I'm looking it up right now. This is a real thing. And they uh, they figure that it's an evolutionary thing because um, there's a lot of, like, unwanted duck sex going on. So they figure that the females uh, adapted a sort of corkscrew situation for their business. And so the, uh, counter, oh my gosh. the counter adaptation is the ducks. Oh, my gosh. The male ducks adapted this thing as well. And... The, a duck penis inflates so fast, sometimes they explode. They okay. <laughs> I just hope that whatever reincarnation I come back as, it is not a duck. Uh, it seems like a fair. It seems like a fair choice. And I, I think that the last thing that I promise you both, I'm going to say about this <laughs> is it's so much a thing. So much unwanted duck sex is happening. There is two different setups because it either corkscrews one way or the other and so 
any two ducks have only have like a 50-50 chance of being compatible because they might be a lefty and you might be a righty. It's like going up to and be like, hey, you an idiot or you an Audi? Are you a lefty or are you a righty? That's exactly it. <laughs> I wish it was like that. There needs to be more consent among ducks. Yeah, they just really yes. need to ask first, please. Just, it's, it's just a, hey, how you feeling? Hey, little mama, let me listen to <laughs> you. Hey, quack, quack. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got any bread over there? I know what all the best crumbs are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, all right. So the last question that I have for you, which is sort of uh, an inside question. Uh, if you are familiar with the Purple Dungeon Squid and have listened to them, which you all should by now. But can you tell our audience how you really feel about Pokemon? Oh, shit. So <laughs> You didn't see this coming, did so, you? <laughs> Bo, I know where you sit on this. And let me just say, mostly I hate on Pokemon because I know how much Andy likes it. Like, not just yeah. likes it. Like, it's his f- uh, formative childhood game. Yes. Um, so I've framed Pokemon as a kind of Michael Vick style dog fight training sort of slave labor camp situation. Um, and that makes me feel really good um, in, in the f- way that I can really sully on this thing that Andy really loves. But, you know, at some level, like you're enslaving those Pokemon, right, dude? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of our podcasts was entitled inside a pokeball yeah and i remember tony and i trying to figure out what it's like to be inside a pokeball like is it hell or is it like a lovely chamber with a tv and a a comfy couch that they sit in until they're called out and then they got a fucking thunderstrike out of their butthole you know Mm -hmm. all of a sudden like what is it you know or is it just purgatory blackness you know really what it comes down to though it is animal cruelty a little bit a little bit and i mean it's a good thing that he like they can only say like snorlax or pikachu because the horrors they would have to share otherwise (laughs) like that's one of the other things too do you know that that animal can kind of talk and i say animal andy will go no no pokemon i'm like come on man potato potato like it Mm -hmm. it is talking to you right now there's something up there what i thought was really messed up is they eat magikarp right so do they eat yeah do they eat other pokemon yeah they have to oh no and and i am sure that there's some pokemon that people fuck too oh you know? oh, oh dear lord <laughs> well uh, so that's fair what's like, what's the most fuckable pokemon bo probably mr mime i don't know <laughs> Mr. Mime, he'd be a freak man or psyduck i don't know uh, uh, objection objection to the play <laughs> <laughs> it's only because we've talked about so much duck horniness yes. that you went there. Yes. That's just we yeah. reprogrammed you for that. I'm still thinking about that. Yeah. Um I'm gonna say uh, Jigglypuff is probably a tender, a no, tender sexual partner. No. Just like a cloud. <laughs> what, what was that, Kelly? <laughs> singing to sleep. True. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that Psyduck has a corkscrew then? Or fact. That- Back to that. Yeah, definitely. Two corkscrews. <laughs> <laughs> is this the first triple X episode of Precisely? And is no, it my fault? No. No, it, no it, definitely not. No. Fair enough. <laughs> no, it usually gets perverted way earlier in the podcast. Right, I dig, I dig. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I mean, they definitely eat magic carp. What else do they eat, Pokemon-wise? They get milk from Milk Tank. Mm. There's a Pokemon called Milk Tank. Yeah, it's a cow. Does he evolve into cum dumpster? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, surprisingly, he does not evolve actually at all. I don't think he has. He's just a big fucking cow yeah. that's pink, and it's just like these little udders and everything. Yeah, and you and you know what? I think Milk Tank is what second, third, fourth second generation gen. I think. Yeah, so before that, they didn't even have milk, so fuck it. Now, there's also actual, like, familiar animals in the poker world as well, right? Like, they they have dogs and cats and birds, right? Or are all animals yeah. Pokemon, pocket monsters? They got Pidgeys, which are 
pigeons. Right, but do they also have pigeons, though? Do you know they what do. I mean? Like, Yes, they actually do. do That's kind of wild, eh? Yeah, but I can't think of the name, but I know it's in Pokemon Go where it actually looks like a pigeon, whereas Pidgey does not look like a pigeon. It no, looks no, like a... But like, no, but he's saying, like, is there a real-life pigeon inside of yes. Pokemon? And I think the answer Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. So, oh. no, like, you wouldn't see Snoopy or whatnot. You wouldn't, no, you wouldn't. In Pokemon you would be like, oh, that's a nice dog. You would say, like, oh, that's a nice lollipop. Yeah, or, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, does Atch Ketchum have a Pikachu and also a St. Bernard? No. 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 Okay, got you. Definitely it not. It do not exist. It's only Pokemon. It is all Pokemon. Yeah, because if you ever saw, like, that new Pokemon movie, Detective Pikachu, did you watch I that, did, I did see that, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, they, there was no pets. It was all Pokemon. And there was, like, Charmanders that were, like, cooking and Machokes that were directing traffic. It was, like, a symbiotic world with humans Very and Pokemon. Talented. Very talented. Yeah. Yeah, the next Pokemon movie should be like a Planet of the Apes style uprising where the Pokemon fight for their freedom over their human oppressors. I would go see that. <laughs> so would I, but do you think people would like Pokemon still? <laughs> or would they like be like super scared to even turn on their app to play Pokemon Go? Yeah, I think know? it ev- eventually becomes like a Godzilla situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be super scary. And what about legendary Pokemon? Like, is there only one of them, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, I, I really don't understand that. You're 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 floating a little bit out of my wheelhouse, because I just have a casual disdain, and I've now said every Pokemon that I'm aware of, so <laughs> I'm, I'm getting into trouble a little bit here. I can fake it a bit, but yeah. a legendary Pokemon is like, what exactly? Uh, like Mewtwo or Mew or Ho Ho or Lugia. I'm surprised I fucking know all these names. Uh, what else? Zapdos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the, the Are, three you know, birds. Moltres. Yes, Moltres. Um. So yeah, like there's only one of them, but yet Ash Catchem can catch all of them. You know, that's because his last name is Catchem. So he's essentially oh like hi- hunting the last white rhino. He's essentially but like a ten of them. Poacher, yes. Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, this is a dark future. <laughs> it is right. <laughs> I don't mind it though. I yeah, like it seems Pokemon. like a solid it's game. I, I, you know what? If it came up it during is. my era, I probably would have. I probably would have been a game I played for sure. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Pokemon and then, like, offshoots, like, Digimon, I totally would choose Pokemon for, like, real world life. Like, I would not want Digimon and be like, oh, you're a, a Mon Mon Mon. You know, like, no. Like, I don't want a Triple Mon. I want, like, a Charmander. Not a a Controller Mon. I like Or a... a per- a brick mon or whatever they are, you know? It's like, no. I like how Pokemon universe is like, there's no guns in this Pokemon universe. Meanwhile, Digimon yes. is just like Gunmon. He's like a gun that yeah, yeah, has yeah. guns in a cowboy hat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. It's not good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, anything else that you want to tell our listeners about the Purple Dungeon Squid and why they should listen to you guys? You know what? Like, if 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 you listen to Precisely, you don't need to bother with us. This is the better podcast. You know what I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. No, like, uh, if you dig this, you probably dig us too. Uh, we're, we're it's a little bit of a different flow, but along the same lines, we would love to have you. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm just really glad to to make my way onto the podcast. Like, uh, it's been a, a really it's been a blast, and it's been a weird thing because I listen to you guys. And for you'll see here, like a couple moments, I forget to speak. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm live and here. I'm here in the flesh, and uh, I'm I'm just so thankful that you guys had us on. Me. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I would love to come on to your podcast. You know, that was in the talks for probably over a year now, but 
I had to start my own podcast to have you on because that never happened. That's right. It was all a plan to show, uh, just to give you that loving push into your own, all, your own podcast exactly. territory. God damn it. We will have you on the Purple Dungeon Squid. Um, we reschedule about four times before we record. So get ready for that. Yes. And, yeah, uh, you know, get ready for all the hijinks that go down on our side. But we would love that, man. And furthermore, you guys have to get your butts up to the great white north and visit some of our 265 breweries here in Ontario. I think you'd love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a great time. I've never been to Canada. I would love to go. Yeah. I don't think I'm allowed to go. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. We'll sneak you in, buddy. Okay. Why don't we get you one of those I'll, federal I'll, pardons I'll, and then we'll sneak you in. Syrup. I'll, right. I'll dress up as a, a Reese's Pieces <gasps> oh. from Hershey's. Ooh. Be like, hey, Canada's. <laughs> I'm a chocolate bar. I'm a chocolate bar. <laughs> Dude, Reese's Pieces is not a chocolate bar. It's individual. <laughs> I'm two pieces of peanut butter with chocolate around. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's get into the damn topic of tonight. Uh, so, Dan, you came up with this topic. I thought it was great. It's uh, what's your top three couch co op games? And when you first said this to me, I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, oh man, Mario Party's great. Uh, Mario Kart's great. And I'm thinking about these games. And then I'm like, wait, couch co op means that you're actually working with the person next to you, not just playing a multiplayer game. So, yes, couch co op, where it's two people or more, I guess, uh, trying to go for the same goal and not competing against each other. Right. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's the vibe. It's it's not competitive. That's out. And you guys have to be in the same physical space. So it can't be like an online thing. We're talking like the yes. old school co-op vibe, which I think really has its roots inside of the arcade. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, man. For sure. So you start us off then, Dan. Well, listen, I got to start my list real deep, really, really deep in, in, the, in history. And the NES, I think, is like the warm bastion of couch co-op games. Um, and I think that my favorite is a deep cut, is Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Is this the game you're familiar mm-hmm. with, guys? Yeah. Now it is. Now this this game is something I I dumped many hours into, and you are playing the eponymous Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And what I love about it is it's got this uh, Mega Man vibe, but with a very cartoony overtone. And they left you as chipmunk sized, but yet you still possess little fun outfits: a, a furry aviator's jacket and a Tom Selleck uh, style Magnum PI. Hawaiian shirt. So you you are still miniature. So you're moving this your way around this miniature world using mechanics to like move screws up uh, or nuts up screws to like go up in levels, throwing boxes hither and yon, uh, boosting your partner uh, uh, over obstacles. And it really harnessed both like uh, an honest sort of pure cuteness, like a like a child's innocence, whilst forcing you to work together. You could not just uh, sort of separately go around uh, kicking ass with giant muscled dudes or huge machine guns. You had to sort of help each other along. And in this game, the throwable box is the deadliest weapon, and you use it to great effect. Mm-hmm. And I that I think it's just it's a very playable and fun game. You can throw each other. You can catch things your buddies thrown. It's got this great soundtrack. I I have to put it way up there. And like NES is no slouch. It's got a bunch of just baller co-op games like we're talking battle toads we're talking bubble bobble we're talking you know the the ninja turtle games of that era manhattan project and the arcade game but this is the one that's got a special place next to my heart absolutely it's a great game for for the nintendo so uh my number two that has a special place as well um is one of the arcade ports that made it to the Super NES, uh, the Super Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a top game. I actually just played this. <laughs> this is an awesome game. It made use of the multi-tap on the, uh, on the Super Nintendo, so you could get four players 
on your sort of, you're in your living room, all your buddies. Um, I don't think I ever like fielded a full team, but, um, you know, I'm sure some people did. It, it had a lot of features that you hadn't seen in games before. Like you could grab foot soldiers and throw them into the screen. So you'd throw them towards camera. And there's actually a boss you fight Shredder who's like in this mecha robot and he becomes the screen. So you're kind of looking through his vision. So to defeat this oh, boss, cool. you got to whip um, foot soldiers into his view and crack his screen to sort of beat this boss. So they use this mechanic really well. Uh, very cartoon enemies. It, it, Kelly, do you remember uh, Baxter Stockman, the fly? Mm-hmm. He's got this very cool, he's mutated and, and gross. He's got this kind of cool, like, fly swatter gun that fires this sort of gooey hand that turns into a hand or a fly swatter, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it's just this big hand coming at you. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the sort of 90s kids, um, nostalgia packed games it has everything from the sort of the cartoon you see all your favorite villains uh bebop and rocksteady and it's your classic side-scrolling beat-em-up yeah i just uh it's funny you brought this one up uh, in in the conversation as we were trying to get this podcast ready because i literally just played this game um what was it last last weekend with um one of my friends came over and, and her husband was working on the floor in the basement with Scott and we were just upstairs playing video games and we were j- just jiving off of some retro couch co-op games and that was one of them that I threw in and we had a great time just playing and running through just like a side scroller beat em up you cannot beat that like we throw that in we threw sunset riders in you know it was it was a good time to just go through and and play and just just like that retro vibe that you're sitting on the same couch with the person and just playing the game together. So good. You so got it. And like before the internet was a thing, there was this assumption that so many games were going to have to have some sort of multiplayer element to them, right? Like unless it was an RPG or, you know, another kind of niche game, they usually tried to make some sort of multiplayer work into it. And so in these early these early consoles, you got a ton of that, especially like between NES. Like I looked at NES uh, six, uh, sorry, NES, Sega, and Super NES. That's where like the golden spot for co-op games were. Um, mm-hmm. They are some now, but like once you got to sixty four, the the co-op games in sixty four are like few and far between. They mm-hmm. kind of stop being a thing, even though the sixty four has four controller part ports. It's ready to go on things like. Um, you know, Mario Kart and um, 007. 007. You took the words out of my mouth, man. 007 for sure. But it's not like a true co-op. It's like this deathmatch thing. Uh, yeah, no, that's what it is. It's multiplayer. Who Who's the best out of the four of us? Who can duck, strafe, shoot me in the head? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's what it was. Yeah. It, it was a, a competition world then, you know. Which that's what we wanted. That's what, how we wanted to evolve games, you know, was who can be the best out of the four of us, yeah. you know, instead of being like, how can we beat this game together? Yeah. You know, like internet was just coming out too around then as well, dial up. So it was just all about being the best. Whereas before internet, it was how can we beat this without internet? Yeah, <laughs> without us knowing what internet was, That's you right. know. But like, how, how do you how do you play this game? You know, on a sleepover and try to beat Mario uh, three. You know, yeah. like how can we do it in six hours? Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. I get now that we open the topic. I got to know so I can know your souls. Who do mm-hmm. you pick for 007 Deathmatch? And Odd Job is out, right? Uh, well, you can pick Odd Job. That's going to tell me something, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Who was the guy with the the jaw jaw claw? Uh, Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the guy with the jaw? The jaw thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's metal. It's in his face where his jaw would be. Metal what jaw man. Yeah. yeah. Crunchy make jaw face. Yeah. Jaws. Yep. That's, a, jaw that's a baller move because you're going for an intimidation factor knowing full well mm-hmm. you are 1.5 times easier to shoot. Am I? Yeah, he's, he's a bigger dude. He's the opposite yeah. of random task. 
Isn't that so weird that they did that? You know, like they made different sizes. Like it was almost like Mario Kart, whereas like Toad is smaller, so he is faster. Yeah, for real. Whereas Bowser is bigger, so he's slower, but more powerful and can run into you. When you run into Jaws in the actual game, I think it's I think it's the ruins. I forget what the level is. It's uh, one of the, the extra levels that you, you can unlock in the game. He does have like 300% or something health because you can laser mm. Jaws in the face with double lasers for like 10 seconds before he actually takes a dirt nap. Damn. Yeah, he's not messing around. Kelly, I got to know. Who's your golden eye guy? I, I believe I usually go Jaws too. Double Jaws. No. This is a moment, guys. I, I'm pretty sure that that's. I mean, I haven't played in in a while, but I'm pretty sure that that's that's my that's my most picked character. Yeah, that or like a female character, but I can't remember any other names there's like natalia who's the yeah. the, the mm-hmm. girl with the blue shirt yeah um there is xenia on a top who's the girl in the movie mm-hmm. that um kills men with her like crushing them with her hips um yeah, God mm-hmm. bless her she was so terribly erotic to 12 year old dank dan i'm uh, like i am getting a strange feeling about this i just want to crush people with my own hips now just uh, like yeah <laughs> I, I think it was more like I don't know. That looks like painful, but I think I might be okay with that. I think I might yeah. slide up in those DMs. Um, <laughs> now, with a with a sneaky ROM hack with this game, um, you could uncover the fact that they were going to include all the bonds in multiplayer because there are um, picture placeholders. But if you load them up, you just get uh, Pierce Brosnan. But m- my guy was Siberian Special Forces. He's mm-hmm. all gray. So he blends mm-hmm. into so many of the like backgrounds mm-hmm. and you can sort of sneaky sneak your way around. So that that was my go-to for sure. Yep. There you go. It feels good. So uh last but not least, I've cheated a little for my last selection. How about you save your last? Okay. How about you save your I'll last? Save it. And we'll go with we'll go with Kelly, her two. I dig and that. And we'll go with my two, and then we'll go back to you for your last final we'll reveal. I appreciate that. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, yeah, it, this was definitely a little bit more difficult when we took out the fact that we were li- we were literally trying to co-op and not go against. Um, yes, right? It, I was dumb to think that way, made, but I'm glad bit. I'm not in the same boat. No, yeah. it's not dumb to think that. It's just when you think couch co-op, you think that you can just have a multiplayer mode most times. And it yes. doesn't matter if you're going against or you're together. Um, however, I think uh, my top three... Uh, would be, I'll say, like, I really enjoy when somebody comes over and you just kind of play a rock band game or a Guitar Hero game. That's kind of a fun time. So you're not really going against each other. You're kind of working together to get your your score to be high enough that you don't fail out of the whole (laughs) song, but then you get to work together and create some music. So I kind of like playing those with people when they come over and um, I don't, I don't really play them a lot by myself, but they've always been kind of a group game that I enjoy. So any of, any of the guitar hero rock band games I'll throw in as one, as my uh, third. Uh, Is it weird that I've never played any of them? How? It's it's not weird. It's just uh, it just it's been such a long running franchise that I'm kind of surprised that you haven't at least tried it once. And like you're a mm. collector, Bo, you must have waded through just seas of these peripherals that people are just desperately trying to get rid of. I've sold a lot of them, and I probably still have like three in my closet right now that need to be listed but yeah well man uh if no i'm i'm just not musically inclined so i never like felt the want to play yeah i don't know Bo, you strike me as a drummer buddy i feel like you could drum your ass off well okay so yes i did play drums in fifth grade like fourth and fifth grade i was in band brag and uh yeah i wasn't that great if I if I forgot my drumsticks, my teacher would make us do push ups and sit ups and stuff, which was weird because it's not gym class, it's band class or practice. And uh it was during the Bill Clinton administration, and I might have said this on the podcast before, but he would teach us the drum like solos 
by saying Bill Clinton Monica. Da, 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 da. Bill Clinton Monica. <laughs> And that's how I learned drums. That's awesome, man. At least at least the snare drum. But yeah, yeah, so I did play that. Guys, can I have a, a brief sidebar? Uh, your yeah. honor, your honor, a brief sidebar. So uh, for my mm-hmm. birthday, my, my sweet, sweet lady gave me this awesome gift. And it was a bunch of stuff, but some of it was like things that my mom had held on to for a long time that I believe she was just trying to like get rid of some of the heaps of things she has. And in there were like a bunch of my report cards and included in there was my grade eight report card. And my music teacher said... In the comments to my grade said, Daniel can serviceably play his instrument. He needs to disrupt class less. <laughs> wow. <sighs> what, I love it. What instrument were you playing? Oh boy, I wish it was something cool, but it was the clarinet. That's fair. Oh. That's fair. That's fair. It's, a, it's a support instrument of the woodwind variety. And it was, it was, it was like... I- uh, the instruments were being picked out, and by the time I got there, like trumpet was taken, drums were taken, guitar was taken, and it Damn. was down to, like, so uh, Daniel, would you like the flute or the clarinet? And I'm like, of the two, clarinet, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's basic. I mean, basically, the sister to the saxophone there, though. So that's right, a uh, cousin to the bassoon. Yes. Uh, so. I mad mad respect as a saxophone player. Mad respect. Oh, cool. Would you play alto? Yes, a uh, little tenor, a little alto. Dabbled in the soprano variety. I like any song that's got a sax in it. Any song that's got a sax in it slaps. Like "Careless Whisper," "Dear Loud." Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with a little bit of the sax solo. Just throwing. I'm, Honestly, okay, I don't listen to a lot of popular music, but The Weeknd threw out a song recently, yes. and he saxophone solo in the middle of it, I almost hit the floor. You know what? Oh. The sax is back on tracks. It's coming back. I am for it. I am here. The sax renaissance is happening, and I'm living it. <laughs> Kelly, I feel like you and I just became best friends. I'm not sure, though. I'll have to check. Yeah, I feel like you guys uh, might just start a podcast <laughs> without me, so that's okay. Karate Garage? <laughs> <laughs> our new podcast, our side podcast, will be called Sax Tracks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like it. We just break down each song with a saxophone solo in it. We, could, we could do that. We're Take well, quite 15, a few. 15 minutes an episode. That's all we need. That's all you need. <laughs> it's it's um 13 minutes on saxophone topics, two minutes on duck je- genitalia. <laughs> then like a ripping five minutes <laughs> that's right that's right and then that's it that's yeah it's it. the only podcast with a 10 minutes uh saxophone intro <laughs> <laughs> okay like, is this is this all of it <laughs> is, this, is, is this the whole thing all right guys sidebar closed i apologize for disrupting both mrs brookster's class and this podcast <laughs> No, it's fine. I can't apologize for Mrs. Brookster, but you're fine for me. Um, Very well. Yeah. Anyway, number two, I would say, uh, is Borderlands. That's my second. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a game that that Scott and I play, and uh, we've played it more on the... not You can do the couch co-op with the Xbox, but we necessarily play more on... Uh, the PC, but in neighboring rooms because he likes to play PC games because he's a dweeb and doesn't like to hold controllers. So, um, but you can do the Xbox version and 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 PlayStation version on uh, couch co-op specifically too. But I enjoy playing that game with him. Um, it's one of the first games that we played together, and it's just a really Generally, Borderlands is one of my favorite series, and the fact that it has a couch co-op feature for a game that is so new, I'll say. Even the newest one still has it, so I guess yes. Um, It's just fantastic that they keep that couch co-op going for that series, and they keep it alive for new games. Hmm. Absolutely. That's a great game. I I've never played a co-op though. I hate that series. <laughs> now, so, but you, sorry, go ahead. Friendship. 
<laughs> yeah, friendship canceled. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, yeah. you have a tender no heart for podcasts. it. The podcast canceled before it began. You know what I? Yeah. You know what I? I tried to love this, Kelly. I tried to love it. I bought uh-huh. every one, being like, "This is the one." But something about the art style makes my eyes bleed. And no, that's you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. And there's I, no. And that throws what most people off. I mean, honestly, I wish that you you could get over that because or like turn it off or something because mm-hmm. the humor and and the just the fullness of of all this all the shit that they put in there in the background and everything is just so good that I just wish that mm-hmm. if you could just turn that off and just enjoy it as a, as a 3D game. And I agree with you. Like, it, it has everything that I usually would need to like a game. Like, it's got a unique art style, which is normally a good thing, but it just catches me the wrong way. And it's got this, like, tongue-in-cheek kind of dirty humor, but it's, like, 1% off than catching me, like, where I like it. Like, I'm so close to, like, a ha-ha, but it's just far enough out, just by 1%, that I'm like, oh, wah-wah. And you know what I noticed in the, in the most latest one? I felt like, because I played the single player, because I really want to love this game, Kelly. And it felt like all all my the things my character were, was doing, when it cut to the cutscene, it's like my character didn't do it. Some secondary character was getting all the glory. I'm like, but I just I just killed the guy with the gun. No? Not? not? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's fair. You know what? You, uh... That actually rings a bell to me because you guys reviewed Borderlands or the newest one, right? Mm-hmm. And you were talking about this the same thing where you're like, ah, oh, the humor is just not there. It's not hitting like I want it to. And like I recognize it has like the it has the ingredients to make a funny cake. But for some reason, yeah. it's not coming together for me. So I don't, I don't begrudge people that like it because it clearly there's a good game in there. It's just it's not for me. And like I went out and purchased this game full pop. I was in, uh, I was in my EB Games, which is GameStop for you guys, and I was talking to one of the guys there about it. And he's like, "I tell you what, you buy this game, you don't like it, you bring it back in ten days. I'll give you a full refund, no questions asked." I said, "I will, I will." I will give this game a full shake. And I come back on the ninth day. And I'm like, Dale, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's my two though. That's my top, I guess. My I like it there. All right. So my first one would be the original halo or halo two for the original Xbox. Um, to me, this, like epitomize what couch co-op was and having sleepovers and being with your buddy being like, bro, we are taking down the aliens tonight. And you're like, cool. Who's driving the warthog? And it was always me. I always fucking drove the warthog cause I was the best driver and I loved it. And my buddy, whoever was spending the night or if I was spending the night at a friend's house, they were the gunner and we would just fucking wreck ship (laughs) and it was a great game um there's like just the whole couch co-op aspect if one of your friends like if you went ahead or or your friend went ahead and got sniped or killed by an alien you could be in the background and make them respawn you know by you not being a dead man as well which also helped I think that's one of the best things about couch co-op games where there is death involved is that you can always help respawn your teammate um, by not being dead. Uh, My second game, though, I'm like torn between one that I mentioned to you guys and one that I just thought about right now. I'm going to go with one that I just thought about now. It's uh, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. Ooh. Now, it you, lets you... Because t- I was thinking about Donkey Kong. And I was like, is that two-player? Is the original Donkey Kong Country for Super Nintendo two-player? Mm-hmm. Oh, that thought it so. Is. Okay. It is. But so for the Super Nintendo, it was sort of like uh, Sonic did this too, right? Where like... Once the first person died, the second person was in control then. Right. Right, Kelly? I think so, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you, you would be Diddy Kong if Donkey Kong died. Right. Or if you hit select, then, it puts the other guy into the hot seat. Yes, absolutely. 
So with Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, though, we're both playing at the same time. Um, where we now, now I'm like questioning myself if that's the truth, but no, I'm pretty you're sure. Both playing at the same time. You're both yeah, we're both playing at the same time. Um, so like, if if there was like a cart that you, like a mine cart that you had to jump into, or like a, a submarine, or or like an airship, or something like that which were all barrels of some sort that you had to jump into, one person would control that. And if you died, both of you died. But just the platforming aspect of it, both of you guys are playing the whole time. So my wife and I beat this game and like 99% completed it. There's something that we're missing in the game that I don't know what it is, but eventually we'll find it someday when we go back to it. That's impressive. Tropical Freeze is hard. It's hard as fuck. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, and I love hard platformers like that. Like I, it makes me feel like I'm living. You know, when I'm playing <laughs> a game like that, where like I'll go to bed fucking angry as shit if I didn't beat that last level. You know, but I still died sixty times in a row. So eventually, I need to go to bed, and then I'll pick it up the next day and beat it and be like, okay, cool. So we went through it, and what's great about the whole co-op aspect of it especially with the newer version on the switch is that my wife was able to play as funky Kong, which has an, he automatically has an extra heart. He floats longer in the air. It's just like the, the handicap uh, novice player that you want to be. If you're a noob, I guess to platformer games or like, you're just not as good, you know? So it worked out where I was like, Hey, I'm going to do this really hard part platforming. Can you just sit back and not die? And and then in case I die, you can just hit my barrel that's floating in the air and I'll pop back up. And so we did that and that helped me be able to beat the game with her. You know, like there was aspects like near the end of the game where she's just like, I can't be here. Like there's not even a reason for me to to respawn because the map's moving and I have to move with the map. You know, it's like, I'll just be wasting our lives if I keep playing. So you just do it yourself. Sure, I did that. But just for the regular levels, it was great for her to hold back in certain areas where I'm just like, chill, let me make sure that I can get from A to B. So Playing the yeah. anchor position. Yes, exactly. Good strategy. Making sure that we live another day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, going back to Halo, because you said it really quick, that's such yeah. a good pick. And I, I I firmly believe that as a co-op game, you've like hit the nail on the head. And I also think that that game starts at legendary. You know what I mean? Everything else leading up to legendary difficulty for co-op is like training wheels. And then the real game yeah. starts at legendary. And that game pulls no punches. Like uh, brothers and are forged in fire of, of the fire of legendary Halo. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Those laser. It's a great game. Those laser sword guys coming at you from all angles, like insta kill. That's that's when the you separate mm-hmm. the the boys from the men. Yeah. <laughs> the awkwardly Canadian from the possibly feminine. <laughs> yeah. Fair. The ducks from the non ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Quack, quack, motherfucker. <laughs> if a duck is playing Halo and it's beating me, I think I just give up at that point. That's when it's time. That's when you know. That's when you go yeah. in the towel. I think I'd quit. I'd quit all. Pretty much. <laughs> you <even> have thumbs. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> All right, Dan, what's uh, your last one? So I, I, I cheated a little bit, but I couldn't resist. Um, my okay. top game is uh, originally an arcade game, and it, mm-hmm. it is maybe the most out-of-the-side-the-box revolutionary sort of uh, ambitious project that ever got put on. And it's a game called D&D Dungeons & Dragons Shadows Over Mysteria. Have uh, either of you guys heard of this? I looked it up when you told me about it, 
And I was like, this looks like Golden Axe. But you're like, it looks like Golden Axe on steroids. And it does. It, it looks crazy. It might be actually pronounced uh, Mystera. I may have said that wrong. But yeah, this is a game that came out um, back in the 90s. It's a four-player arcade cabinet. I believe there's six different characters you can pick. And they're like pulled out of the pages, uh, Dungeons, and Dr- Dungeons and Dragons. It's actually a mix of like classes and races because you have Cleric. That's a class, right? You got thief. That's a class. You got warrior. Well, fighter's a class. It might be fighter, actually. You got magic user, which is a class from first edition uh, D&D. You'd call them like wizard or mage now, but back in the old school, they called them magic user. Real inventive. But then you just have elf, which is a race and not a class. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just sort of feathered that in there. And like this game is like starts with the basics of a side-scrolling beat-em-up with weapons, because each of the dudes has got weapons. But then it adds on an inventory system. So as you progress through the game, each of the characters can pick up gear, a hat, armor, boots, a ring, a, an amulet. And then it has a secondary inventory where you pick up items, throwing daggers and burning oil and wads, wands of coal or rods of cold, rods of frost. Uh, and it features this story that has all these different permutations through it. You have branching paths where your characters um, can pick which way they want to go. And if it's four players, it becomes democratic. Like if you, uh, whoever picks like the one, the choice that gets the majority of the picks um, you have class specific skills. So you have like the thief can open up locked boxes. Otherwise you got to burn up keys and there's secret rooms and tracks, traps to detect and magic spells to cast. Like, a, cause you know, you look, think of like a, the great games like golden ax, you have a magic button and it, it, it gets complex enough that you could like, how much magic do I want to use? But this game is so ambitious. You have like some of the, the casters have like 10 magic spells. Um, so to make this one of the deepest, most ambitious side scrolling games to ever put, be put to, to the arcade. And it is a ton of fun. I, I remember playing this once or twice when I was but a lad, um, in the arcade and I was overjoyed to see they had done a port to PlayStation, Xbox live and PC and you can pick any of them up. This is a brutally hard game. Luckily, if you pick it up for any of those consoles, there's like little gut game modifiers you can put on to make it a little bit easier, a little bit more playable. And you have infinite quarters, so you can just play to your heart's content. And I have to say, this is this is one of the best co-op games out there. I got to give a, a, a secret runner-up to the Alien versus Predator arcade cabinet. Never mm-hmm. never got a port to any of the consoles, but you have two playable Predators, you have a playable Ninja ninja Gal, and you have Arnold Schwarzenegger's brother um, in the lore. I, it's, he's named something Hutch, but he's like a cybernetically augmented dude, and it's a full brawler beat-em-up. Tons of fun. Oh, that sounds good. I have not played that. I've, I've played neither cabinet, but... They sound interesting, and if I ever come across it, I will definitely have to play it. It's um, it's sad that Alien vs. Predator never got a port, and I think it's like a licensing issue. Um, but you can get your hands over on D and D Shadows over Mysteria, and or Mysteria, and it is online capable. So you can get a, a couple buddies. Maybe the the three of us should should give it a go online. We might be able to fire something up. That'd be fun. That'd yeah, be fun. I'm down. Um, all right. Well, my number one, uh, it's kind of an all encompassing, but I have to say my favorite couch co-op games are the Lego games. So essentially any Lego game out there is, is couch co-op. Uh, I'll narrow it down and say Lego star Wars because star Wars is my favorite franchise, but Lego has covered pirates of the Caribbean. It's covered Lord of the Rings, star Wars, Jurassic park, you know, like, Hundreds and hundreds of feels like of pop culture, Lego, like Marvel and DC and Batman and all this stuff. It, it feels like it's all like just all these games. But uh, I love the Star Wars one because I grew up playing that with my sister. I just remember sitting on the floor playing PS2 and we're playing together because you're working through each level 
you're trying to defeat all the enemies. You're trying to find all the secret collectibles, which I love secret collectibles, trying to gather all the money that you can when you break things. And then you ultimately have to beat the level with getting enough money, getting all the collectibles and just generally completing the level. And you get things for each of those. So it's like, it's the best couch co-op because you have, you have to work together for collectibles and you have to work together to complete the level. So I think that the Lego games, and they still do it because my sister and I, whenever she comes to visit, we play Lego Harry Potter together on my Switch, and I haven't played it without her. Like, I will not play that game unless she's with me because I don't I don't want to continue on the storyline without her there with me. Like, I don't want to do it without being co-op because it's just so fun for her and I to sit together on the couch and play for a couple hours and just go through the Harry Potter storyline, but it's Lego little people and you're doing fun stuff and it's cute too. I don't know. The Lego games are, they just continuously wow me. And I'm really looking forward to the Lego Skywalker soccer that's supposed to come out soon. So that's, that's going to be the next one that I got to pick up and I'm very, very excited. But if you have not played a Lego game for any system, essentially, I highly suggest trying it. It's something that everyone can play. I can play it with my cousin's kids. I can play it with my sister, who's like an intermediate gamer. I can play it with my friend, who barely plays any games at all. It's just something everybody can do. It's just a really easy couch co-op game, and it's really fun. So with the co-op for Lego, um, is there like a two-player mode, or do you just hit up the second controller? Just... Just drop in with the second controller at any point in time or drop out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, that's awesome. such a good And then pick. you're just a second character then you're just a second character, yeah. like a second Lego character. Yes. And I mean you can you can swap characters and they okay. give you more options of characters as you go through, or if you're in a free play mode of that level or whatever, you have more characters to choose from. Um, but yeah, you, there's there's plenty of character options as you move through the level. Very cool. It's a solid pick, Kelly. I love this game and this series of game. I've play I play them with my sweet sweet lady all the time, and the, you nailed like the feeling of togetherness. Mm-hmm. You know that it gives you to like push through the story. I don't think there's any better feeling than when you collect enough uh, like coins to get that true Jedi that comes oh up. And just yeah, like right there on the screen. You're like, yeah, I did it. Now I don't have to care about the coins. Now I just need to care about getting the other like bricks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's such a good pick. That's that's you. I think you might have picked the best the best one so far. <laughs> Thank you. I do. En- yeah, for sure. I do enjoy them a lot. Yeah, I've been actually buying a a decent amount of Lego games for the Wii U because I'm going for a full collection on that. But that's for a later story. Yeah. My final one is. And I'm sure I've talked about this before in the podcast. I know I have, but it's uh, we love Katamari. Mm-hmm. So this is the second iteration of Katamari after Katamari Damacy on the PS2. This is still for the PS2, but I remember playing this game with a friend after like showing a bunch of friends this game at parties. You know, like we'd all hang out, drink, smoke, whatever, and. I'd be the one that would like bring my PS2 to the house and be like, Hey, check out this game where all you do is roll up shit, you know? And like, <laughs> and, like, nerd. <laughs> yeah, fucking nerd. But, uh, we all loved it. Cause it was such an easy game to play. If you've never played a Katamari game, it's, it just feels like second nature because it's all joysticks. You're literally only using the thumbsticks to move back and forth. You click them in to, do 180 turn around your ball and you just roll up things. So you're not pressing buttons. You don't need anything. You just use both of your thumbs to press forward, to move this ball forward. And one thing that we learned without reading the manual or knowing anything was someone picked up the second controller and was like, Oh, there's a second character on the, on the board, on the main hub. Oh, what's this do? You know, let's go talk to this one character in the main hub together. Oh, we can, both join this game and then we join the game we're like wait there's only one katamari ball but we're both controlling it wild and we realized 
that, you know, this one level that I just played where I had seven minutes to beat this level, now we have 10 minutes to beat this level because two of us are playing it, which is sort of crazy to think about because two is better than one, but really our two minds have to become one to be able to play this game and master it. So it took a lot, but my one buddy and I really dived deep into it and had our whole like language being like left, right, flip, you know, like where we knew where to go to get the best possible score in each level. So by the end of the game, we rolled up everything you could possibly roll up. We were at 100% in this game because it added time by playing in co-op mode. But you had to be so in tune with your player too that that's why this is my number one couch co-op game. You know what I love about your picks? They always include this like secret strategy that you've cooked up with like your your gaming partner. I assume it's 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 your your life partner as well. But like uh, uh, no, no no no, Kayla no. no, my wife doesn't play Katamari with me because that that will make her dizzy. Like she's oh. a, a two D platformer person. This is like I'm talking about like when I was like. 15 16 oh, i got you old. katamari is such a wild yeah. game it's one of those games you're like this feels so good why does this feel so good and you said the second one so good. point that's so clear it's got that a little bit of japanese weirdness that that mm-hmm. just makes it so beautifully unique what's the name of like the king that has the roses uh the king of the cosmos, the cosmos now yeah. when you get 100 yeah. percent, does he doesn't he like shower you with roses or something yeah he's just like oh oh yeah oh you know, like, I forget exactly what he says, but he's just like, oh, you did so awesome. Like, if you get, like, 80 to 85% over, he's just like, oh, you're amazing. But, like, anything below that, he's just like, uh, you could have done better, kid. He Because he's, like, a, he's know? a little bit horny for the Katamari ball, if I recall correctly. Yeah, but he is also your father, but uh. also God. So, it's like, it sort of, like, goes back to the the religious games, but in Japan. So, it's like... As a prince, you are Jesus in the sense ah. like you are the son of God and the king of the cosmos is God. And he's just always disappointed in you unless you're rolling up everything. <laughs> and then he's like, all right, kid, you're good. Like you can be my son tonight, you know, but if you're not rolling up everything, he's just like, eh, Dis- disowned. I, I, re- I yeah, I really wish you weren't my kid. Oh, wow. You know? Harsh. Yeah. Just to like roll in the whole Japanese and the whole religious thing. Japan has a, what, about 1.5% of their population is Christian, yet about 85% of them have Christian ceremonies for their weddings. Hmm. Mm. A little bizarre. Coming in with the facts hard. I'm Dan. always hitting you, the facts. You always bring in the facts. Are you like looking this shit up online? Nah, man. Like while while doing it, you just know so this, this is in your here's head. Here's a weird dank Dan thing. Once I learn a uh, fact, if it's interesting, it never leaves my brain for whatever reason. Okay. And I feel and you on you're that. not the first person to be like, did you just look that up? Or like, what? What? How yeah. do you know that? I know some weird stuff, my dude. Yeah. Well, no, I I was just like re-listening to an older episode of yours today, right after the Joe Rogan podcast that was five and a half hours long. I had like 20 minutes left in work that I was like, let me listen to Purple Dungeon Squid to like catch up on shit, you know, but it was like episode 20 something. And you guys talked about fucking uh, penguins or something like a fucking bird. For like twenty minutes, uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you're like, let me let me bring up these facts where where this this penguin its beak actually glows in the dark under a black light. What kind of bird is it? A uh, toucan. No, it's not a toucan. Are you sure? No, it starts with a P. Uh, oh, a pelican it might not be a- parrot. <laughs> uh, birds. No. Now I'm googling birds that. Something glows in the Beak. dark. No, it's a. Uh, it's not a penguin. Glows. This is great material under yes. black light. Now I gotta know. It might be black light. Uh, yeah, the puffin. Yeah, the puffin. Yeah, the puffin. Yeah, yeah. You guys had like a whole twenty minute segment about the puffin. Very, yeah. Uh, very like, key to the operation. Yeah. What What I tell people yes. is, I know two things about everything, which makes me seem like I know <laughs> a lot of things, but it's just two things. So after I tell you those yeah. two things, then you know everything I know. 
You're up yeah, to speed. Absolutely. Yeah. Either way, it was good. It was a good episode. Thanks, buddy. So, yeah. So we got through our top three. So that's our top nine. We asked our listeners, mm-hmm. though, what their favorite couch co-op games mm-hmm. are. Are you guys on Precisely Podcast Instagram page to read these out? Yeah. Let me get on there. Okay. So I'll read out the first one. We are going with the Chronicles of a Gamer, Mr. Bobby. He says, bro, I have so many. And damn, he does. Contra, Blades of Steel, Monsters in My Pocket, Chippendale, Rescue Rangers, The Streets of Rage franchise, Gunstar Heroes, Mario Kart, WWF Superstars, TMNT, Super Double Dragon, GoldenEye, Call of Duty, Rising Sun, WCW versus NWO, NHL 94, NHL 2000, The Warriors, Joust, Balloon Fight, etc. I can go on. Also, that guy on the couch looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> Literally any beat em up you can think of was his second comment. And I was like, all right, bro, you just named off everything. But okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Great games, though, that he, he mentioned. Definitely uh, the my favorite one in that lineup was Gunstar Heroes. Such a good game. Uh, That's a great title. Mm-hmm. So uh, next we got Mr. Game and Brews, and he says, If I had to go old school, I used to love playing Streets of Rage 2 with my friends. Nowadays, my go-to co-op games are the Borderlands series. Hell yeah. My wife doesn't play border, uh, video games often, but she knew I loved Borderlands and bought Borderlands 2 for me when it was released. I got her to start playing it with me, and she got just as hooked as I was. And we need something quick to pick up and put down. We'll play Overcooked. But that game kind of leads me to not like whoever I'm playing with. One of those friendship ender type games. <laughs> yep. All right, I'll, I'll hit one here. Uh Random Retro AM says, River City Ransom is probably my most played co-op game. It was a huge game at the time with a lot to explore, tons of items to buy, and secrets to find. All made that much better with a second player. Not that River City Ransom is bad by any means, but adding a multiplayer feature to most games automatically makes it ten times more enjoyable, no matter how bad the initial gameplay is. I'm true that. Yeah, I agree with that completely. And that's uh, one of our good friends that has been in the chat with you and me, Dan, for since day one of Instagram. Yeah, he's an OG. OG. Yeah, that's maybe why I, cher- you, I cherry-picked him. Good man. Yeah, Tip of the hat. yeah I saw you cherry-picked him. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll go back to the scheduled people on the list. <laughs> uh, Unsealed Game says, Knights of the Round, Fighting Force, Kaido. SMW and Crisis Beat. So Fighting Force, I recognize that's similar to one of our favorite games, Kelly, which I'm surprised we haven't mentioned. Oh. Dynamite Cop. Oh my God. What? <laughs> yeah. I was like, why didn't she mention this? Well, I, I could have. I could have. Yeah, I know. We mention it all the time. But yeah, Fighting Force is very similar to that. It could be the same developers for all I know. Um. Next, we got Twitchy Dougie, who says Battletoads, Double Dragon, and Rayman Origins. Yeah, Battletoads, Double Dragon is so good. You could be human, or you could be frog, or toad. It was yes. one of the first like universe crossovers. Before yeah. before any of these crossovers we're getting now, it's, uh, it's an OG one. And with the most unlikely yeah. of partners, when uh, uh, Amphibian met man, Truly. Yep. All right, you want me to do one more? Sure. Uh, in no particular order, it's it's got to be sure. Captain America and the Avengers. Awesome pick. Or Donkey Kong Country on the SNES, as far as nostalgia Who goes. That? That's uh Sorry, uh, Slam Cramps. <laughs> sorry, Slam Craps. <laughs> oh, Slam Bead Craps. So this is the guy that's editing our podcast Get right out. now. Get out. Get out. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, More yeah. recently, but not that recent, House of the Dead 2 and 3, solid picks. Uh, returns for the yep. Wii uh, have provided for some great times, too. Yeah. Which goes back to your light gun episode. Yeah. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like, light gun games for the most part are all multiplayer co op where you both are in it to win it together. So, yeah, absolutely. Donkey Kong Country for sure as well. Mm-hmm. Damn right. Uh, so, ultra cool gamer dude said TMNT, the arcade game, which that's what you said, whoop, Dan, whoop. right? Well, he said Turtles in Time, but yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, I mentioned it as like an aside because I like yeah. snuck in a list of 10 in my list of three. <laughs> yeah, right on. So he said, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure our guest has, you know, a similar pick to that. And he said, my birthday is on April Fool's Day. When I was a kid, I opened up my last present and it was like 20 pairs of turtles underwear. I'm like, what the fuck? Pissed. Mom says to dig through the undies. Sure enough, TMNT was under all of them. April Fools, they all yelled. Great memory. Played the game nonstop as a kid. Never beat it, though. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, our buddies over at Lit Gaming Arena say, oh, man, there are so many, and they are not wrong. Uh, Halo, for starters. Overcooked is tons of fun with four people. I've spent tons of time on old school Left for Dead. Borderlands is always solid too. There you go. Well, J Bam official says Tetris because I have no friends. Cry mm-hmm. emoticons. <laughs> he lies. He has so many friends. J Bam, we're your friends. Don't Damn even right. play. Yeah. Don't even play. Calm down. <laughs> You know what? I've been to his house multiple times, and this motherfucker does not even want to play any video games. <laughs> hate, to, hate to see it. I hate to see it. Yeah. <laughs> he has the biggest collection I know. I'm like, bro, let's play something. He's like, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got this giant room, and he opens the door. You're like, wow. And, and then he's slowly no, closing we're talking, it. Nah. We're talking a whole... No, we're talking a whole basement. Well, we... I mean, you're more than welcome to look at it and play it yourself or just talk about it. But to get him to play with you, nah, not happening. It's, He's too it's tired. It's like The Simpsons. We're going to look at pictures of cakes. This is a Lady Baltimore cake. Do you have any real cakes? Right. Oh, my. No. Too sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love it. I love him. He's a great guy. Uh, Shidoshi Game says Gauntlet Legends. Ugh, did I say that right? Gauntlet Legends. You got it. Which, uh, yeah, thanks. I I recognize this name from Nintendo 64, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Was it out before Yeah, it that? started on the NES. Gauntlet 1. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Was that a co-op game? It was. It certainly was. Okay. And it, it's actually a pretty, pretty dope for the time. And a little bit, like, fast-paced for an era that was really, like, dude, dude. To, you know, kind of slow. Uh, your guy moves around really quick, and it, it gets hectic. It's a little bit like it's built a like a dungeon crawler, top down style. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Hognut says it's cliche, but any Mario Kart always did justice growing up. My friends and I love growing up. Love Turtles in Time as well as Contra. Good times, brother. Uh, Cambridge. Th- with Leet's Beak, I think it's Cambridge, keeps it short and sweet with Tekken 3, nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, I almost wanted to say that's not a co-op game, but we'll allow, yeah, we'll allow it. We'll let it, we'll let it pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. multiplayer. Joey Joe 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 Jr. Shabadoo Doo <laughs> says Contra and Gal's Panic, which Contra is definitely one of the best couch co-op games foundational and gals yeah gals panic i think i looked it up it might be a shmup um but it's for the saturn or arcade he says interesting uh you got something to say about that one i was just gonna say i think this is um a puzzle game that you like it's one of these puzzle games that you slowly reveal um, a lady behind the puzzle, and she's like in 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 moderate undress, sometimes blushing a little bit. That seems to be the that seems to be the game. <laughs> so you turn over the piece, and there's a booby behind it. There is. There's some boob boobacular secrets behind there. Honestly, good times. All right. Uh, 
MKN Retro Gamer says, I play a lot of team battle mode and Bomberman with my kids. It's a great experience and fun for all. You get to teach a bit of strategy. With a more adult couch crew, like gun games are a blast. Could not agree more. Like gun games are absolutely in the couch co-ops. I'd probably say top five for me. Yeah. Yeah, true. Uh, uh, Nintendo Rose 91 says, I remember as a kid, it was F-Zero on the SNES, Super Mario World, and some Duck Hunt. Nice. We love Rose. She's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, C yeah. Mills rounds it out with, I'd say the most legit two bros getting shit done co-op games I've played with my friends have been Army of Two, Cannon Lynch, and Gears 1. I don't think I've ever played any of those games, actually. A lot of them are Xbox exclusives or, like, PC crossovers. Army of Two, you have, like, two of the most, uh, like, broed-out mercenaries, and they really brought forward, like, the armored face mask, like a a Jason Voorhees-style, like, armor over your face, which makes sense. Like, you always see guys with helmets... And you're like, hey, what if they shoot you in your favorite area, the face? And they took that yeah. at its word and got like a nice armored face mask. And it's like legitimately a game about drawing fire. So you, it's got an aggro system in it where you're taking cover, popping out and getting the aggro from the enemy. So they're concentrating fire on you while the other dude, like it does this flanking maneuver. And they had a couple sequels and a bunch of DLCs. I beat the first one and, and it's totally serviceable. Like it's a, it's a really fun co-op game. Cool. Well, that's all we have. Do you guys want to talk about games that you played or just close this out? We've been going for two and a half hours now. Yeah, like I can th- I can you. throw one up. Like I'm playing – well, before I tell you what I'm playing, I get to give an, uh, an honorable mention to uh, a more contemporary uh, PS game called Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. I, I've heard great things, actually, about that Which game. Which sounds a little bit like Gal's Panic, but it's not. It's very different. Mm-hmm. You're basically yeah. uh, manning this ship that has four positions in it. There's four stations. One operates shields. The other one operates weapons. One drives the ship. And one hosts the super weapon called the Yamato. Um, and it, you switch up your configurations in a kind of like Contra style power up uh, pickup game. So you kind of pick the power ups through the levels that you enjoy and like work for your, the way you guys like to use the ship, different weapons, different shields, different engine types. And the trick is, is there are five stations, but you, there's only two people, although it lets you go up to four people. So you kind of have to move around as these little dudes in the ship to man the different stations and the, the rest of the game kind of occurs like a, a, a space fighting game. You're moving around sort of uh, north, south, east, and west. It's not three-dimensional to make it through this, this level. And it is hectic and a ton of fun. And it has this super cute undertone. You're, you're saving little animals from this dangerous environment, a, a little bit like Sonic. Um, so it, it has this cute veneer over it. Uh, me and my sweet, sweet lady played through the whole thing together it's great man you got to check out lovers in a dangerous yeah. space time no this is actually a game that i wish i would have bought on the switch on a physical release from super rare because i'm looking at it right now on ebay i remembered hearing about this it's now going anywhere between 250 to 300 dollars. oh snap yeah on the switch yeah it's a rare game. Yeah. They only made 3,000 copies, and it's a good game, so that makes people want it. You know? These. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, as a as a follow-up on another couch co-op game that I didn't say would be for the Super Nintendo Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Shout out to Shidoshi Games. He uh, just took a picture of it for his, like, letter Z and his alphabetical, like, game thing for August. And uh, yeah, it's my favorite letter Z game and probably one of my favorite Super Nintendo couch co-op games. Is this a rare game, guys? Mm. Zombies Ate My Neighbors? Yeah. No, no. Uh, no. no. No, I wouldn't say so. It, it came out for the Genesis as well. It's a 16-bit shooter. Uh, not like shmup shooter, just like more like action shooter where you have uh, water guns as 
bullets that never run out, but then you can get other weapons like popsicles and tomatoes and rocket launchers and clowns that you have to put clowns down if you're at the chainsaw level where there's like dudes with chainsaws and they fucking hackle and scream like crazy and it's super scary, but they're like chainsawing the bushes that you're like running through a maze and you're like, fuck, like there's no way to kill them unless you have a rocket launcher or you have a clown like a blow up clown that you you put out and they just chainsaw that for a while so you can run away from them. It's a crazy game. Yeah, it's there's fun. like environmental stuff as I recall too, like bounce on trampolines yeah. and yep, yep, like, yep, and pools. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a fun game. And you got a yeah, you got a weed whack like a crazy alien weed like am- animal type thing species. Yeah, it's super fun. So yeah, what games have you been playing? Have you said that? Yeah, Dan? I was playing. I'm deep into Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, okay, sorry. going back. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit. It's like one of the newer editions of the game. It's uh, it, not the newest, but but pretty close to the. New- and uh, it it stripped out everything that got me off Assassin's Creed. I don't know about you. Love the first one. It was almost like a tech demo. It was so revolutionary. And the second one was more the same, like some refinements. But you could start to see the cracks. And by the time I got through the next two games, like I was playing Black Flag, and I loved the the ship battle stuff. Like that, that was totally yeah, my too. thing. I I love that. It was tactical and it was cool, and you could upgrade your ship. But I had enough of all the missions that were had been played out. Like when you have to follow a couple guys across rooftops to listen to them talk. And if you get too too far away, you desynchronize just to hear them. I'm over it, man. I do not want to follow two guys talking for 10 different missions. And you know, the rest of the missions are, are cut and paste. The, in the story was in my opinion like really bad there's this level where you're infiltrating the assassins area and for some reason your guy just starts knocking guys unconscious rather than murdering them and i'm like well obviously i'm not murdering them because i'm going to join these guys but i wouldn't know them i'd be leaving up a hundred dead bodies here and then they're like oh you're gonna join us i'm like i think i'm done here um but going to this new game they've stripped out all those missions those terrible follow missions they're nary a mention um, you're you're playing in ancient Egypt, and the way they it's such an interesting environment with the pyramids and the beautiful sweeping deserts and the jungles. Like when you watch the sunrise over, I think it's like Lake Mitra. It's just gorgeous. Like it's such a pretty game to look at. Uh, that said, I think I'm about eighty percent of the way through the game. And it has so many side missions, like an unbeatable amount of side missions, at least from my perspective, that I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to close out the story and finish it. But it's it's the first Assassin's Creed since the early ones that I'm sort of, it's recaptured my interest. Cool. Nice. I've never actually played Origins, but yeah, Black Flag and the newest one, which is Odyssey, I, I've liked. Not, not like my... Uh, go to go to but yeah good games cool uh i've been playing a lot of i've been trying to get into some back into some open world games so i've been playing some borderlands 3 i've been playing some fallout 76 because i feel like uh when it gets colder out i get more into playing open world games for some reason uh i don't know maybe it's just like the season's changing and and you just want to cuddle in and get under a blanket for like six hours and play a game. Uh, So I've been doing playing some of those. I also was playing my ring fit adventure um, for the, how is that? It was fun. Um, It's interesting because it, it goes along as a platformer for a little bit, kind of, which I really enjoyed that part. And then it kind of goes into some RPG elements, honestly. Um, You've got these battles that come up and you have to do certain exercises to make these battles happen and pick out these certain attacks to defeat these monsters that are attacking you. And um, so that's kind of interesting, too. I, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting to just be like jogging along and all of a sudden, boom, I got to battle this monster. So I kind of I kind of just like the jogging in place aspect platformer style of it. And I'm not, I didn't really, I don't know, maybe I have to play a little bit more of it to like the, uh, the battle style a little bit more, but it's fun. It's a fun, it's interesting. 
Um, I like how they use the, the ring. You can squeeze it in or out, you know, or up and down into your chest to, to do certain things. And I think it's a, a, a really diverse peripheral that they made, which is super cool. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to pick up a copy and try it myself once I find one. <laughs> They're restocking. They're around. Yeah. So I am almost done with Paper Mario. I've been playing it as much as I want to play other games. I'm like, I need to finish Paper Mario Origami King. And it's really good. Like, there's been so many fun aspects that, like, we didn't mention in our episode with Marcus from Lit Gaming Arena. Um that I'm sure you haven't gotten to yet if you haven't been playing it, but such like good little like short clips and stories, like little side adventures. Like this one part I was uh, in a, in a mini game show, which usually happens in a paper Mario game, but it was a lot of fun. It was like jeopardy and stuff. Um, But yeah, really enjoying that game. And I'm almost at the end. I could have beat it like two days ago, but got a game over and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to go to bed and haven't picked it up yet again. But uh, one game that I did try that's new, uh, I tried the Iron Man VR demo, which if you have a VR headset, which you do, Kelly, right? Yes, I do. Dan, do you? I'm VRless. Okay. This game is dope, and I'm not even like a Marvel or DC fan, comic book, anything, but I felt like Iron Man in this game. Like you are flying with your hands, you have the motion controls, and you you put them like behind your back, like Naruto or whatever from that anime, (laughs) like how he runs, but you're Iron Man, and you put it behind your back, and you're like, and you fucking just jet out. Of wherever and then you put your hands in front of you and you press a different button you're just zapping away and then you can like double boost by like pressing the button twice behind your back and it's just like fucking insane like how you can like just like weave in, in and out of like these canyons and stuff it's so cool so that dope. sounds like the greatest it's, endorsement uh, that i've ever heard can you give jarvis voice commands as you're going uh no, but like you have to like repair an airplane that's like getting taken down right. uh that you were just in. You had to fly out of it, you know. You had to fly out before you even had your Iron Man suit. Your Iron Man suit that was in a briefcase flew out of the plane first from being blown up. Your plane's going down, you're like, Well, I guess I'm gonna jump out and find my Iron Man suit. <laughs> so you jump out of it and like it's like, Oh, here's my chest plate coming right at me at a thousand miles an hour. (laughs) (laughs) There it goes. Oh, here's my, my right hand, you know, fucking projector arm. (laughs) There it goes. Then your helmet finally comes on. You're like, I am Iron Man. And then like, you have to like fly back to the ship while shooting these fucking spacecrafts out and, uh, like repair the ship in different areas it's super fun like just for a demo i was just like this is great like for this being free this was totally worth a half an hour of play that i was just like i might actually buy this game even though i'm not an iron man or marvel fan or whatever wherever iron man comes from i'm just like this made me feel like a superhero playing this game that's like the that's the power fantasy, right? Like you can actually yeah. get into the seat of of Iron Man, and he's the perfect candidate because he's just a dude in a super suit. Like uh, exactly. just as like a brief aside, I have a lot of Spider Man dreams where like I can web swing, and the idea of being able to mm-hmm. get in the seat of a superhero is awesome. And I don't think they can VR Superman or sorry Spider Man as well because it's harder to sort of lift your legs up and swing. But Iron Man's like the perfect candidate for this this thing right yeah for sure so yeah check it out if you have vr it's free on the playstation network the demo is at least i think the game just came out recently too um i think it came out like august 27th but i haven't bought it yet but yeah it's a good game but we're rolling up on two hours and 40 minutes so i'm ready for deep in the cast man deep in it Deep. Yeah. So thank you, Dan, for being on this podcast. Oh, it's my 
You've been a pleasure. It's my pleasure, man. This It's so great to be on here with you and Kelly. Like, really awesome. Yeah, great, great show. Yeah. No, you, you've been great. Everyone's great. Andy's great, but Andy needs to post a, a picture here sometime soon on Purple Dungeon Squid's Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, it's time. We'll we'll have so, uh, something up by this time. Yeah. Go check out the fresh the fresh material on uh, Purple Dungeon Squid at Purple Dungeon Squid. We'll have something f- uh, fresh, hot, and ready for you. Yeah, it's just one word. It's a great great Instagram too, as long as uh, Andy keeps up with it. Because <laughs> that's not that that's not your part, right? Dan? Uh, no, I only um, do all the recording, the, the editing, and the posting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you do a great job and. You can find your podcast anywhere that podcasts are found, yes, right? Sir. Just search up Purple Dungeon Squid, separate words, whereas Instagram is all one word. Mm-hmm. Right? True say. All right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, thank you, My Dan. pleasure, guys. Really, yeah, really appreciate it. Uh, Kelly, where, where can people find you? People can find me on the highway to Kel. On, you can find me on Untapped. You can find me on Instagram. Um, you can find us collectively on Precise Podcast yes. on Instagram. Yes. Well, where can we find you? You can find me at Bose, B E A U S underscore game room on Instagram. Uh, and just go to our website, precisely.live. We have hoodies and t shirts. And you know what? Hoodie season is coming up right now because it's cold in the warehouse where I'm working. And, you know, they're on sale right now, right? They're like 30, 35 bucks, something. Yeah. They're cheap. Go I'm going to get myself a hoodie. It's go. hoodie time. Yeah. Dude, it's go, su- go support the podcast. Help us because we're trying to make money. A little bit extra money to buy more stickers that we can ship out to everyone else for everything else that everyone's buying. So, yeah, <laughs> do that. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate all the listens. Go check out Purple Dungeon Squid at Purple Dungeon Squid on IG and just search them up on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. But, yeah, thank you, Dan, again. And we out. We out. Peace. Peace.